We're live. I, I can't even believe you're first, Div. That's like crazy already. You're fucking. How are there already four people in the chat? Like, I literally haven't. I I hadn't even started the fucking chat yet. I'm just going to let our Telegram group know right now. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to tell people live on YouTube. Live on YouTube. I don't know. Like, there's no like link, I don't think, right? I've never like in terms of what I see right now, there's no like link, but you could, um, I don't know. I let the telegram group know, right? Oh, the telegram group know. So you guys can, uh, yeah, you can just start some questions there in the chat. That's right. Yeah. Just ask some questions. Div, what are you up to? Nakia, Nakia, what are you up to? What are you up to? What's going on, Yusef? What's going on, Sabi? What's going on, Omar? What are you guys up to? Give the video a like. Give the video a like. What are you guys up to? What are you guys up to? Hey, thank you for the awesome con uh, content exam in three days. What to focus on the most? The, the NBMEs, like NBME 31 and high yield arrows. You should know high yield arrows, obviously. Don't go to the exam without knowing high yield arrows. Uh, but NBME 31. Listening to your micro PowerPoint. Yeah, I said that there were micro PowerPoints uh, on my YouTube, like 45 minute. Um, I don't know if some of you guys know this or not, but um, obviously I put out YouTube MCQs. I've got a playlist with PowerPoints that are like 45 minutes long for micro, like actual, like long fucking PowerPoint presentations for micro. Ali Harby. Hi, Dr. Mike. How do you differentiate between cauda, cauda equina and conus medullaris? It's so funny that you asked me this question because uh, I just did three hours of teaching before I started this live stream. And I was literally chatting with a student about how US only doesn't give a fuck about like uh, like if you were to Google image, like cauda equina versus conus medullaris, and you get like a, a table that gives you like 10 ways to differentiate, right? Things like, uh, you know, saddle anesthesia for cauda equina versus conus medullaris, perianal anesthesia. You assume doesn't give a fuck. What they care about uh, for cauda equina is that, you know, it's leg pain plus urinary retention. That's really high yield. Just leg pain plus urinary retention. It can be uh, acute, like they say, uh, like the question I was doing with a student a couple hours ago was that like literally like a dude in his fifties just got out of bed and like had like uh, leg pain and his uh, post white volume was 400 milliliters, which means he has urinary retention. But the other super high yield point for cauda equina is that, you know, it's uh, caused by METs. That's a very important um, cause. Okay. So like if they just say 55 year old dude who has a urinary retention and leg pain, you should be thinking prostate cancer. Or if it's a female, you should be thinking breast cancer. And the answer on the 2CK neuro CMS forms can just be um, epidural spinal cord metastases. I've seen that. I've also seen just uh, metastases to the cauda equina. Okay, that's what I've seen. I don't think I've seen USMLA assess conus medullaris syndrome. Guys, give the video a like if you're entering the stream so that uh, it jacks up the algorithm, gets more people here. Carson, hello, without biostatistics, can I pass step one? Because I did many, I had many problems in biostats. You can pass, but like, you gotta know like basics. Like you gotta know like sensitivity, specificity, NPV, PPV, like you should know those equations, right? Like you should know that stuff. <clears throat> but for step two, you're gonna have to know it, right? I would just learn your biostats the best you can for step one. Um, and you're going to do that. Obviously, I have a biostats PDF, but I've also got, um, or you can do the NBME questions for biostats. That's how you're going to learn your biostats, right? Like not just QBank, not just my, uh, my um, PDF, but you can do the NBME questions. Div, is there any other way to relieve stress instead of gym? Like would uh, taking a walk suffice? That wouldn't relieve stress for me. That would like make it worse. Um, cause I'd just be like, I don't walk. I never walk. I'm always skateboarding. If I'm walking, it's like weird. I'm just like, this is like so inefficient and slow. Um, 
I would go to the gym. I mean, it's like a, it's a fair, not pheromonal. It's um an endorphin thing. If you go to the gym for stress relief, I've said that. Like you, you need to maintain that while you're studying. That's really important in my view. If you don't go to the gym and you just like play games or something, that's fucking lazy. Like go to the fucking gym, stop being lazy. Right. I don't think there's, ex there's an excuse for not going to the gym. I think that's just like laziness. Joy Rahab Kalo. <laughs> Thanks, Joy Rahab Kalo. Satan of Tondil. Is it necessary? Is it really necessary to do NBMEs 20 through 24? The answer is yes. Uh, and then you ask if you did okay on NBME 25, like a 244. Can you skip those and proceed to 26 through 31? No, I would do 20 through 24. And the other point, Satan, is that if you got a 244 equivalent and maybe 25, it's not going to take you a long time to go through 20 through 24. Um, it's going to take you five days because it's five forms. So just do the fucking forms. Stop being, stop trying to take shortcuts. Um, and then I can give you an extra piece of value, which will be recognize that uh, it's karmic, your study, meaning that if you study really well for step one, it's only going to help you more for 2CK. Um, I would say just do the forms, just do 20 through 24 in addition to uh, 26. Do, you already did 25, but do free 120. And then uh, after you finish 20 through 24 and free 120, go to 26 through 31. Guys, give the video a like if you're here. There's 35 of you here and there's only 13 likes. So there's like plenty of you who are... Um, I guess who don't like the fucking live stream, right? Reem Shams, thank you for all you do. Thanks, Reem. Pranav, how are? How are? Doing well, Pranav. Yusef, should we know the weird sounding shit histopathology? Clearly not. Like I've said that, um, I said in yesterday's live stream that like one of the reasons I haven't put out a uh, specifically like a histopath PDF yet is it's truthfully because it goes against the grain of how I make content. In other words, the th the major theme of my content is not wasting your fucking time and just putting out high yield stuff, right? Like stuff that's going to show up in the exam. And there's actually like very little like gen path, like obviously like cellular injury, there's genes. Yes. Like the tumor suppressors, oncogenes and stuff um, like apoptosis, necrosis, like there's that stuff's high yield. And, um, you know, cellular mechanisms of like, you know, stage versus grade, like there's a path I can talk about, but if I come up with like a very consolidated path PDF for you guys, like as everyone's been fucking begging me for, it'll truthfully be like, I don't know, 10 pages, right? Like it's not a lot. And so I've loaded up my other PDFs of path, like tons of path, right? If we go by system, like you want cardio path, you want fucking GI path, right? Do the, do the fucking, uh, PDFs. Someone just, I got distracted my answer because someone just left, dropped the fucking $50 super chat. Who the fuck did that? Nakia, the fuck? Nakia Brooks, $50 super chat. I know how you feel about working full time. And I'm just going to, I'm going to answer this, Nakia, because I appreciate that. I know how you feel about working full time and studying for these exams. It is, it is what it is. I need to get through QBank, but I have to get through PDFs as well. Should I just continue to focus on QBank and focus PDF study during dedicated study time? No, Nakia. Um, first of all, can you write down uh, when your exam is, Nakia? Can you write down? You gave a massive super uh, super chat, so I'm going to address your shit right now. That's what I'm going to do. So write, I want you to write down when your exam is. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to go through QBank, and I've said Nakia or Nakia. You're going to do 40 questions in the morning, ideally. You have your lunch. And then it's the afternoon where the afternoon and evenings where uh, not only could you titrate up to 80 questions maximum if you want to do more questions, right? You could do that. Um, but you can do my PDFs and my YouTube MCQs in the afternoon slash evening. So Nakia, I want, I want to know when your exam is. But the point is um, during dedicated, when you're going through NBMEs 20 through 24, free 120, and then 25 through 31, Obviously, you can go through my PDFs, like, sure, of course. Um, but that time is going to be largely uh, dedicated to the NBMEs. So 
you know, I'm sure I'm flattered if you are going to spend all your time, you know, hardcore reading my assiduously reading my PDFs during dedicated, I'm flattered, but you need to be going through the NBME exams during dedicated. So when we talk about like in-depth reading of my PDFs, a lot of that should come before the NBME exams. You know, the PDFs are designed to get you higher scores than NBME exams, not artificially inflated scores. Okay. It's nonsense. I've uh, debunked that uh, myth in quite a few of my live streams, but um you know, they're going to boost the same way my YouTube MCQs are going to boost your scores. So my YouTube MCQs, my PDFs, you're going to boost your scores in the NBME exam. So you got to do my PDFs uh, alongside QBank. And then when you get to the NBME exams, you can focus on those largely in the final month. Nakia, you said you haven't scheduled it yet, waiting to finish QBank and see where I am after uh, first and second NBME. Yeah, when you finish QBank, um, Nakia, um, <clears throat> How many questions do you have left in QBank, Nikia? So when you finish QBank, uh, yeah, you're going to do NVMEs 20 and 21. That's what you're going to do, Nikia. Um, I'll scroll back up in the chat, but I appreciate your massive fucking super chat. I appreciate that. Let me see. see where was i up top oh yeah i was talking about the path pdf like before guys if you're coming into the live stream please give the video a like um and so when i was talking about the histopath like it would be like 10 pages like it wouldn't be a lot i've I, you know what's hilarious i i'm not joking right now guys i have a path pdf that i've written like just sitting on my fucking desktop my computer that would like if i just like launched it you guys would be like stoked and i just like haven't like i have literally like 15 pages of a path PDF on my fucking computer that I uh, like histo general path, like all the stuff I just talked about. And you say, why haven't you just like simply put on your website or whatever? Don't fucking feel like it. But it literally, I have a, I could just launch that. It's because uh, there's a difference between just putting something out, but putting it, uh, you know, publishing it at a higher level. There's things I could do to improve it further. So that's why I'm not in a rush though. Pranav, how to, AJ, thanks. Yeah, I'm doing well. Pranav, how to improve percentage in UWorld for step two? Well, you're just going to, I've said, guys, that when you're going through UWorld, step one or step two, doesn't matter. And you're trying to get your percentages up. Um, the first point is don't worry about your percentages. Okay, so if you're getting like 38%, you're getting 52%, whatever it is, don't worry about your percentages. Uh, just you got to continue through the QBank. Don't lose momentum. Okay, so you got to keep momentum going through QBank. That's the most important thing. And then uh, the second point is, okay, but really though, how do we increase our percentages in QBank? Right? What are we going to do? The answer is you are going to go through my PDFs from YouTube MCQs. Okay, so for example, you're going through QBank in untimed tutor random, as I've said, is ideal. You do that in the morning, your 40 questions, and then you got to you know, boost your immuno because you suck jack, jack fucking shit. You're getting all the immuno questions wrong in QBank. So you're going to do my immuno PDF in the afternoon. You're going to do my immuno uh, YouTube MCQs. You're going to do the immuno playlist. That's what you're going to do. And that's going to improve your scores in the QBank, right? So you can use the afternoon evenings for quote unquote subject specific prep. And you can just, while you're continuing to go uh, through my, or through my, through the uh, YouTube, the fuck am I saying? Through UWorld or AMBOSS, uh, Untimed Tutor Random. That's what you're going to do. If you're in class, okay, you guys are like in first year med or something, and you've got like a renal quiz or a GI quiz in like two weeks, and you're worried about that, you're worried about passing, you can go through QBank in uh, subject specific. It's just, I care more about your USMLE performances rather than classwork, okay? So um, I just want you to do well in the USMLE, and that entails doing things in random mode, untimed tutor. But once again, if I'm meeting with a student who's, let's say, in first year or early in second year or something, and like their major concern is not just uh, USMLE, but they want to like get through class, like they've had a, maybe like a fail in like class or something, that's like a salient focus of theirs as well. I can have them do. I can have them go through QBank in subject specific so that they can boost their class scores. But I issue them a caveat. I warn them mildly that just be aware that if you do questions subject specific right now, 
seven months out for your cardio quiz in class two weeks from now, well, you're going to exhaust a lot of the cardio questions. And then later on, you might uh, forget some of that info. That's a caveat I issue. So I'm going to give another super chat. Who was that? Michael. Michael Betamar, Betamarium. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Scroll back that. I mean, if you guys drop a super chat, then I'll address your question faster. That's what it is. I don't have entitlement for that stuff, but I guess like it, you know, if people do ask questions, that is a way to get your, to get attention, right? Like if you want your question fucking answered and you don't want to wait for me to scroll down through like 40 minutes of me talking, then yeah, that is a way to get your question fucking answered. Let's see. Uh, I'm just seeing where I fucking was. Ahmed, Ahmed Elliman. Uh, Ahmed, I recognize your name from like way back. I feel like you've been like, um, yeah, I recognize your name. I'm drinking tea right now. I gotta do a live stream, right? It's 3.46 a.m. If you don't have caffeine, what are you gonna do, right? I could just go through an extra crackhead mode. I mean, isn't that what I usually do? Mustafa, can we omit stuff like biostats psych while doing random U world and study alongside NBMEs? Absolutely not. That's a good question. Uh, I, and I say it's a good question because I've had occasional students do that where they like avoid doing certain subjects like biostats while they're going through QBank and they're like, I'll just save it for later. It's not a good idea. The, the reason is because biostats annoyingly is like a subject that requires longitudinal study. Okay, it requires longitudinal study where you can't just like know zero in biostats and then like, you know, within like three days, all of a sudden, you know, all the equations super fucking well. And like, it doesn't really work like that. You kind of have to like sleep on it. You get questions wrong. And then like, somehow just over time, over many months, uh, you're going to do better on biostats by going through yeah, QBank over time. That's what you got to do. It's a longitudinal process. Um, I've articulated that I've put, uh, I tend to put biostats as the second day out for, like a biostats review as the second day out from people's real deal. Um, you know, just as a formality that like in the morning, two days out, you can review biostats. Like I've said that, you know, and then after two to three hours, like when you feel like, um, you say, I don't need to, I don't need to review any more biostats. I feel good okay, it can, it can turn into a custom study day for the rest of the day. And then the day before your exam, one day out, should be like a pretty relaxed study day overall. Very relaxed the day before. Did someone just drop something? KG became an honorable benefactor of my fucking channel. In case you guys don't know, I have memberships to my channel. And um, honorable benefactor is um, it's the highest membership grade. There's no entitlement. It's I see who's members of my channel and I see uh, what level membership you're at and I see those types of things and, you know, I just make a mental note of it, but that's a big fucking honor, uh, honorable benefactor. That's a, that's an expensive membership tier. That's what that is. Nakia, thanks again for the major super chat. I appreciate that. And Michael, I appreciate that. Um. Ali Harby, quality and safety questions. Those are questions. Didn't you ask this before in like one of my prior live streams? Quality and safety questions. I've said don't worry about because uh, everyone's in the same boat as far as not knowing exactly what they entail. So that uncertainty cancels out like amongst test takers. Wash your fucking hands. Uh, don't leave a like hand washing when it's listed tends to be right. Okay, it's often the answer. Washing hands. Uh, also, uh, you got to take out catheters. Like, don't leave a catheter in longer than it's supposed to be in. You don't want fucking catheters in, okay? You don't want IV lines in. If there's a line sitting in someone's arm and they're not, like, receiving anything through it, you're like, why is this? Your question should be, why is that fucking in the person's arm? Like, if you're the intern or you're the junior house officer or something 
and you like see a patient as a line in, you should know why that's in, not just assume that there's like another doctor interacting and saying, oh, well, someone else probably has a reason why it's in. You should know why it's fucking in and it should come out ASAP. You don't want any catheters or IV lines in. You have somebody loves fucking catheters and UTIs. They love fucking IV lines, catheters for sepsis. They're obsessed with that. Um, yeah. You also need to know that uh, there there is a question on one of like the new two CKNBMEs with mononucleosis where uh, hand washing isn't correct. The answer is um, uh, no preventative measures indicated. It's like weird. There's like a contact isolation. There's uh, hand washing, and it was a uh, no preventative measures, no specific preventative measures indicated. It's like bizarre. I mean, you're not going to be sharing cups with the fucking person if they have mono, but I guess for like hospital based stuff, like that's like just it's a bizarre question, but. Um, I wouldn't focus. I've said just focus on real medicine. That's what I've said. Just focus on real medicine. Hussam, the watch is sick. MAD, saw a cue on line weaver Burke plot on NBME 21. How important is it to know pharmaco? I've said it, you don't have to fucking know it. Line weaver Burke plot. You could know that the. Um, the lines that are, if, it, if there's competitive inhibition, right, the lines are going to compete, quote unquote, they'll cross each other. Uh, if they're non-competitive, they're not going to cross each other. Um, and that the x-intercept, which is going to be uh, in the negative direction, is going to be the, to the left of the y-axis, that's 1 over km. And that the, you know, the x, uh, or sorry, the y equals 0, the y-intercept uh, would be uh, 1 over v max. I mean, do we want to talk about line weaver Burke plot right now? I mean, it's a trolling type of question because uh, this is what happens. I, just so you know, this, you guys, this is what happens where you get like people who the same fucking person here, MAD, who just asked about uh, line weaver Burke plot. Um, probably like I can just say, okay, uh, what are the arrows in DKA for sodium, potassium, bicarb, pH, CO2, anion gap? Uh, give me two reasons why potassium is high in DKA. Okay, tell me about the arrows for uh, serum sodium urinary osmolality for DI, SIDH, psychogenic polydipsia, right? So give me those arrows right now. Renal failure, I want potassium, bicarb, pH, calcium, phosphate, give me those arrows. And they can't answer those basic fucking questions, but they're asking about like Michaelis Menten curves, like Kaplan Muir, Lineweaver Burke, like all this nonsense. Absolute garbage. Michael, better, better Miriam. Hey, Dr. Mike, saying hi from North Carolina. Good to see you, Michael. And thanks again for the super chat from before. Um, I drove through North Carolina. I drove down to Myrtle Beach when I was 18. Um, senior year of high school. I drove down from, I drove from New York to Myrtle Beach. That was like the spring break destination when um, when I was in high school. That was like the cool, you know, all the cool kids. Like, you know, like we all went to Myrtle Beach. Um, it's good times. It's good times. But South Carolina, that was, in, I mean, it's not North Carolina. Reem Shams, I'm using UWorld random mode. Uh, first go. Any advice about statistics questions? No, just do the statistics questions as they come up. There's no, there's no like uh, dramatic uh, advice regarding that. Apart from I've said, don't uh, uh, hold them off and wait for later. Like you should do them while you alongside QBank, like untimed tutor random. Student asked earlier, like should you go through untimed tutor random? But hold off on eg biostats and psych and the answer is no nas an any tips or hacks on organizing nbmes for review the final week uh yeah i mean i've talked about this a lot in that um you know you're gonna be focusing on the latest nbmes you know 25 through 31 in the final week right 
I don't want you touching any NBMEs from two days out till your exam. I just talked about this in the live stream as well. One day out should be fairly relaxed. Two days out should be biostats plus customer review. But prior to that, that's when you can like review the latest NBME exams. NAS. We were talking about, uh, cal you asked about calisthenics um, two live streams ago. And I was saying how calisthenics are beta and you were like, I disagree because I'm an ex-Marine. You're like, I, I have to disagree with you. I'm an ex-Marine. Um, and I think, I think calisthenics are like, uh, not beta. And I was like, nah, calisthenics are beta. There's like beta Japanese dudes in the gym I go to that like do calisthenics, right? They'll be doing like jumping jacks and shit while I'm like trying to lift. And it just like is annoying. It's like distracting. It's like, just fucking lift. Stop doing your fucking like jumping jacks. Carson. Rita Malik, I have like two weeks left till my step one and I'm revising your PDFs and not doing first aid. Is that okay? That is okay. I shouldn't do the entire first aid again, right? Question mark. That's right. Your PDFs seem more than enough. They are. Jay Vora, <laughs> you look amazing today, Fire. Rita Malik, also I'm already done with all NVMEs, just left with free... 120s and free 120s. I you can only you only have to do the new one. You don't have to do this like the notion of doing the old free 120. I, I never I never have people do that. You can do it. I just don't I don't see a reason to have to do it. It's on the same spectrum as saying like should you do NBME 19 or 18? Why 20? Why start with 20? Right for NB or for step two? Why do 60 14? Why not start with four? There is no NBME five by the way for step two. It's like why not do NBME four offline? You could. I just don't see it. you have to. Okay, but um, but you said you're already done with all NBMEs, just the free 120 left. And toward the end, you were scoring 68 to 75%. Yes, those are good scores. Yes, those are safe. But you should convert to three digit scores anyway. I've said I want 205, 210 plus. I'm just like OCD slash neurotic. It's like a Fahrenheit Celsius conversion. The reason I cumbersomely have students convert their two digit percentages on the NBMEs into three digit scores. Uh, and you can do that using Google Images. You go to Google Image, not Google, Google Images, and you're gonna type in NBME 20 score conversion Reddit, NBME 24 score conversion Reddit, et cetera. And you'll get a graph, the best fit line, X is the number of wrongs, Y is the three to score conversion. And um, you, you'll just get your conversions that way. And as I said, the reason I cumbersomely have students convert the percentages into those three digit scores is because a 68% on one form is different from a 68% on another form, albeit two points or three points. I just want that three digit score conversion. And I've said 205, 210 plus on at least three exams is what you need to, before you sit step one. If you take a fail on 25 through 31, you're not, uh, I don't have students sit in, in that month. I have them postpone an entire month. Some students don't want to do that. And it becomes a discharge against medical advice scenario where, the, you know, I just say, okay, don't take my fucking advice. Like, you can YOLO, you can sit. If you get like a 189, but then you also get like a 222, 212, like you get some scores that are higher, but you had one outlier that was lower, I will still have you postpone like an entire month because I don't like that. It's very, that like doesn't happen. I'm just saying if it does. It's not like, um, um, I just don't like the idea of a fail in the final month. Just put it that way. But 60 to 75% is high. NAS, when you say uh, 2024, you mean an actual assessment review and answers PDF. Uh, I've talked about this a lot, NAS. I've said that uh, 20 through 24, um, you're doing the entirety of the NBMEs. And you're going to screenshot your incorrects from um those forms in the Anki and you're going to make a giant Anki deck for 20 through 24 and free 120 so 20 through 24 that's five NBMEs free 120 so that's six that's six forms and then you're going to make a, another second fresh Anki deck for 25 through 31. so and I've, I've talked about this a lot in my live streams about how to do that I don't really want to talk about that for 20 minutes this exact second but like you have to go through 20 through 24 then free 120, then 25 to 31. If you don't do that, that's audacious, okay? 
people are looking for shortcuts. You know, I mean, it's like, I don't know what to tell you. There's a reason why um, you got a lot of people worldwide failing comp, CVSC failing uh, step one. It's because it's like, have you done the NBMEs? No. Okay, we'll fucking do the NBMEs. Right? Have you finished U World? Yeah, you got to finish U World with momentum as well, or Amboss with momentum. It can't be like you finish 85% of U World. And it's like, okay, on, uh, when did you start U World? When did you start the Q Bank? And they're like, well, last year in like August, wrong fucking answer. Okay, you got to start it in like, you know, two months ago. That's great. That's that's momentum, right? So um, you have to have momentum. So you got to be doing daily Q Bank. And then that's going to ultimately lead up to the final month where you're doing 20 through 24, free 120, and then 25 to 31. That's what it's going to be. Guys, if you come into the live stream here, please give the video a like and please sub to my channel. If you're in this live stream, you're not subbed to my channel, you're an asshole. Abraham. Tanusian. Took step two yesterday. It was surprisingly very easy. I had maybe an average of five flag questions per block. Hoping to at least crack 240, 245. Study plan was UWorld plus PDFs plus 6 through 13. Okay. What about the CMS forms? You didn't do those? I mean, at this point, it's like we're not going to retrograde or retroactively uh, criticize. We're not going to do that. I'm just articulating that, you know, if you haven't gone through the CMS forms twice, you have no business sitting uh, step two, right? And you might say, well, I didn't have a choice. I had to sit. I had to get this over with. Like I had a you know deadline or something. Okay, it's fine. But, you know, if you have a student... Let's say like you have a friend, okay? You got like their 266 or something. They're so amazing. And you say, what did, what did you do? And they say, oh, well, I did like all of you world. I did um, like the NBME exams, you know, and like they read some things. And then you say, did you do the CMS forms? Or like I did a few of them or I did some of them. It's like you didn't do like all of them. Uh, you didn't do all the offline ones as well. You didn't do them twice. And they're like, no, I just did some, some of them once. Well, they could have maybe had a 274. That's the thing I tell people, like, just because someone scores well, a lot of that's just innate test taking ability, right? Like, um, you get people who score well, and then uh, obviously I can put them in a position to give advice, understandably. But sometimes they just, it's, they innately do well in tests. It's not that they knew how to prepare well. If they knew how to prepare well, well, 266 becomes a 274 all of a sudden. Did you drop another fucking $50 super chat, Nikia? Or did I hallucinate that? No, 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 no. No, I'm just like hallucinating that. Okay, Abraham. Abraham, um, Patrick. Patrick, um, France. NBME is 1 to 14 are for step 2, and NBME is 15 to 31 are for step 1. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. Um, you're going to do 6 through 14 for step 2, and you're going to do 20 through 31 for step 1. Yes, there's earlier forms, but in terms of the ones you do, uh, that's what you should do. Omar Gaber. I think people saying your files inflate scores since there are difficult experimental questions that normally I only expose to them when I do the real NBME questions, e.g. VDJ recombination question, maybe 25 thoughts. Um, I don't really give a fuck if people think that my PDFs artificially inflate their scores and then they don't use my PDFs. I don't give a fuck. Like if somebody doesn't want to use my PDFs because they have something, I think that is a pretext. I think that's pretextual, actually. I don't think that's, I think it's an excuse. Um, I think you just get some people who require more social proof uh, before they're willing to like do new things. I think that's what humans are weird that way. Like in that they will, uh, instead of just saying like, you know, I will only take advice if the person has like a hundred thousand subs or something. Like instead of like just, they maybe it's not conscious for them. 
That's like the thing. So they'll have like a pretext or an excuse that they're like, I don't want to use that resource because it will artificially inflate my scores. And they like just parrot that, uh, that myth around without even looking into the resource themselves. Right. That's what it is. It's not like a big deal. That's like, that's how, um, it's understandable. Like brand matters. Like, right. Like if, um, FA being around for fucking like 25 years fucking matters. So it's like the notion of when I say like FA era is over because it's no longer a numerical step one. And then people are very like, you know, apprehensive at that, at that notion that like, you're serious. Like I shouldn't look at FA. Like you're serious. Like, well, I mean, that's like, that's well-deserved on FA's end because they have that people want to use their resource because they've had 25 fucking years of social proof. Like it makes fucking sense. It's not like, so I don't have entitlement that, you know, I can just come around, I, you know, for like two years, three years, and then people are going to just like genuflect to my resources enthusiastically. Like I don't have that entitlement, but simultaneously, I don't give a fuck if someone, uh, you know, is antipathetic or doesn't have an interest in using the resources. I don't give a fuck. They don't artificially inflate your scores. If you're going through the right content, your scores should go up. That's just how it works. Right. So, like, what do you want me to tell you? People don't complain that you world or Amboss artificially inflate their scores. Where the fuck do you think they get their their questions from? It's the NBME exams. Someone just today in the Telegram group, you know, posted a question from NBME two offline for step one about eosinophils um, releasing major basic protein causing uh, epithelial damage and asthma. That was a new world question where like 21% got it right or something. And right. So the, there were screenshots from the new world question and there was a screenshot from NBME two offline, like NBME two from like, like year 2000. Well, people don't complain that you world's artificially inflating their scores, do they? No, they don't. But they'll complain that my PDFs artificially inflate their scores because as I told you, it's pretextual. It's not a, it's not the actual reason they don't want to use the resources. They'll just see a video of mine. They don't like me or something. And they're like, that's why. Mad, no. Step one has NBMEs 1 through 31. Step two only one, uh, 14. You're responding not, you're not asking me a question. You're responding to someone else in the chat. Jacob, the whole score inflation thing is crazy because it's literally what shows up on US Million. Yes. Nakia. I haven't scheduled it. Waiting to finish QBank. Yeah. Toby, hello, doctor. I love your content. You're awesome. Now to my question, how much I need to search different resources to know some obscure shit drugs no one's ever heard of. Why would you want to do that? Toby, why would you want to do that? Um, you should know um, the drugs that show up on the NMME exams. I cover the high yield drugs in my farm modules. You know, they're free. And my YouTube MCQs, my farm playlist, that's free. I have Farm Monkey, they're paid, but free farm modules, free YouTube MCQs. You know, and then you'll do the NBME exams. You'll see drugs show up. Like Bortezomib, it's asked twice, right? You know, like that's um you can know that. So different and I talked about that. It's literally the first fucking page of my immuno PDF. Right? People get wrong. This is what happens. People get like someone will screenshot something into the telegram group, like like Holy shit, there's this weird drug called bortezomib. Do we need to know this? Holy shit, this is so weird. And then, okay, I'll just, I'll be an asshole and I'll screenshot the first fucking page of my immuno PDF right below it. And I'm like, there you go. I mentioned bortezomib, first fucking page of my immuno PDF. The implication being, if you go through my fucking PDF, so as I've inculcated, then holy shit, your scores are going to go up. It's not rocket science. Aditya, Adelia. Hello, Mike. Thank you for your PDF and MCQs. Satan, thanks, Mike. Got it. Does studying your PDFs create bias in Mimi's 2031? No, Abraham. Just talking about that. Carson, we are waiting for you each day, my inspiration. Musk and MG not scoring well in Euro. I got stuck with embryo. I get stuck with embryo and physio questions, how to improve that. You just got to continue through QBank. I'm not making a high yield embryo PDF because it's nonsense. I've talked about before how all the embryo for like step one that you need to know could be fit. On, I could fit that on like one page. 
um, pretty much like three out of four, like 75% of the time, neural crest will be the answer. Then you got to know an answer. Like there's a question where they just say like, um, I think it's like tracheoesophageal fistula or something. Like uh, they ask about the lining of the esophagus, that's endoderm. You need to know that um, thyroglossal duxus, the answer is endodermiform and cecum. That's on one of the endomies. You need to know cranial pharyngioma. That's just Rathke pouch. That's roof of primitive pharynx. Okay, so I mean, obviously Hirschsprung neural crest as well. Heart, lung, uh, fistulae, neural crest. DeGeorge neural crest. Fetal alcohol syndrome neural crest. Okay, so it's like, that's it. And obviously, actually, what's, what's funny, the highest yield uh, being a third and fourth pharyngeal pouches for DeGeorge, right? I mean... Well, not just to George, but if they give you like a parathyroid adenoma, that's like of the, you know, like of the superior left parathyroid or something, you say, you know, the answer will be fourth pharyngeal pouch. Or if there's like, you know, an adenoma of the, you know, right inferior parathyroid, you say, well, that's third pharyngeal pouch. Moogle 900, I built a cat house for my kittens today. Aisha Salim, any tips for someone who just started studying for step one in IMG? Start with QBank. Okay, start with UWorld. Start with Amboss. The reason I'm like, I like 10% found that humorous is because if I'm not doing this live stream, I don't answer questions like that. If I get DMs like that, I ignore them. So uh, maybe the benefit of doing a live stream is that when I get asked a hyper fucking noob cuck question at stage zero level where someone doesn't know something, you know, rather than just ignoring it in a DM or something or deleting the fucking telegram message, which I do all the time, um, I can address it because there are other people here and it can provide value, right? So as I've inculcated uh, to the point of exhaustion, a shosh salem is you're going to, when you're starting to study for step one is you're going to do all of you world are amboss, okay? And you're gonna through, go through untimed tutor random 40 questions per day in the morning, take lunch, the afternoon, you can titrate up to 80 questions. And then, or if you don't wanna do more questions in the afternoon phase, uh, so the morning phase is always your 40 untimed tutor random, uh, four blocks of 10. The afternoon phase, if you don't wanna titrate up to 80, you can do my PDFs on a given day, you can do my YouTube MCQs on a given day, but you need to get through, um, a tetrad. So QBank, number one, number two, my PDFs, number three, the YouTube MCQs, colloquially audio QBank as I refer to it. Number four, the NBME exams. But the NBMEs are going to come late. Okay. You're not going to do the, you're not going to touch an NBME until you finish all of QBank first. So starting to study for step one, just start right away with questions. Okay. That's what you're going to do. Gabitia Flores. Gabitia. Gabitia Flores. Do you recommend doing UWorld plus Amboss QBank to get 260 plus besides the CMS forms twice? The answer is no, it's too much. You're not gonna wanna do that either. You're gonna do UWorld. This is, I'll tell you what we can do, okay? But like, let's say we were meeting over Skype and you're hyper gunner and you're like, I want a 260, 270, 280, whatever, okay? And you're like, no, but really I could do both QBanks. Like, should I? I'll tell you what uh, I would have you do. I'd have you go through all of Amboss or UWorld, not both. Then I would have you do a first pass of all the CMS forms, as I've talked about. Then I would have you sit NBME 6 through 8, and we'd see how you go on 6 through 8. Then I would have you do a double pass of all the CMS forms. Then I'd have you sit through 120. Then I'd have you sit 9 and 10. And you're literally about to sit step 2 now, because you're just going to go 9 to 14 and sit. And if your 9 and 10 scores are like 240 or something, but you're like, I want the 260, I'd say... We can add another month and a half to, we can add two months if you want. We can do it if you want to do all of Amboss now. And you're gonna be like, I don't want to fucking do that. And I'm like, exactly. Okay. You're not going to want to do a second QBank now. But if we get to nine and 10 and you're already getting like 260, you're like, well, this is good. I'm like, exactly. You can just sit the fucking exam now, right? You're just going to go 11 through 14 sit. But we can, if we, if we were to uh, entertain the notion of doing a second QBank, Amboss uh, plus you all the combination of the two that wouldn't come prior to the first pass of the CMS forms. It would come only when you're already very late and you, you just finished nine and 10, you got your scores back. You don't like them. And rather than just doing 11 through 14, you sit, I would just have you, 
do the second Q bank then. It's very rare that that would happen. It's like it's only if someone's like really not performing well, like genuinely, like they're borderline pass or I mean, most of the students I interact with are just trying to pass. Right. Gabitia. Thanks, Mike. Channel or Chanel. Hi, sir. Div asks why the lamp is not changing colors. There. Is that better, Div? Content with that. There. All right. Um, Fariha Fatima, tips to tackle drug ad questions and certain research abstract questions. I've, I've made videos on this, but I would say that um, what you're going to do is you're going to flag those questions on your real deal. So for example, you're going through the real US simile, you're, you're, in, you're in a block and you get a drug ad question that's, let's say, like a three-part question where it's like a little mini research article, holy shit and you don't know how much time to dedicate to answering it but it's like a uh, a three-part question right like one of those questions where when you answer the first one you can't change your answer going back like one of those things um like either a set where it can be uh as i said a, a little like research article slash abstract question well when you get questions like that you're just going to flag them and come back to them on the real deal because do you have two minutes to answer it? Are you going to be rushed for time in the block? Or can you, uh, do you have 12 minutes in which you can answer it, right? So in order to, um, you know, devote the appropriate amount of time, you can just flag it and come back to it. That's what I tell people. But there's no, like, specific study you have to do for drug ad questions. There's no specific study. You're just going to, um, you're just going to wing them in the real deal. Prab, P-R-A-B-H, are you a doctor? Double question mark. The answer is yes. I graduated med school, um, but I don't practice. I do Yosemite stuff. People are like, like very like astonished by that. Like the notion that someone would graduate med school and like want to do like, you know, other things. That's like uh, radical to people, right? That like you should graduate med school and like you have to go on to like, you know, sit in a fucking office and interact with patients or like you have to like go on to like sit in a fucking dark room and look at like chest x-rays or that you have to fucking like go on to like, you know, perform like, uh, you know, knee surgery or something like people have different niches and interests. So you can get a medical degree. You could go into law. You go into medical law if you wanted to go to law school after, right? You go into uh, business after, you know? anecdotally like you know i have a student for instance who's like who has a family member who finished med school practices as a doctor a little bit and then doesn't do medicine anymore and is in business you know like that's something people do as well uh, one of my buddies from med school um finished med school and he went into it how's that that's a complete fucking like change of direction Moogle 900, he is. We call him the legendary Doc Mike. He does not practice, though. Anonymous T, do you recommend redoing your old incorrects for step two? Uh, only if you're doing very poorly. Like if you were to sit um, NBMEs 9 and 10, as I said, so you're going to finish all UWorld or AMBOSS. You're going to do all the CMS forms first pass. You're going to do NBME 6 through 8 offline. Even if you do shitty on 6 through 8, then you're going to go on to a double pass of all the CMS forms. Then you're going to do free 120, then 9 through 14. So if you, let's say, take 9 and 10, you do really shitty. Well, we could have you go back through all the UWorld incorrects for like, you know, a month and a half or a month or something. That's only if students are doing poorly. I don't like to add that onto their schedule. It's usually a no that I have people do UWorld incorrects. But it's the same for step one. Like, I don't have people do UWorld incorrects unless they are failing uh, the MBME exams, right? I don't have them do that. Chanel, hi, sir. I love you so much. Jack Gala, do you recommend anything besides UWorld and practice tests for the last two, three weeks of step? 
too dedicated. Um, I've U World has no role in the final two to three weeks. I've never once said do that. U World shouldn't be touched. Basically, QBank has no role in the final like nine weeks of step two prep, and it has no role in the final month of step one prep. You're scoring low two fifties right now. Greater than two sixty would be dope. You need to do all the CMS forms twice. Jack Gala. Start there. Guys, if you're if you're new to the live stream, please give the video a like. Um, and please sub to the channel if you're not already. Appreciate it. David Zaldumbib. Dr. Mike, really grateful for the PDFs and especially for biochem and farm modules are extremely good. Thanks, David. Jay Solo, can you talk about resilience and how you developed it? Yeah, but it's not med related. I've said that I have unconventional hobbies that, um, you know, the process of incurring repeated adversity is what makes you resilient and uh, strengthens you. I said that. And there's different ways people can go about that. But um, I've talked about how uh, one way to do that is to uh, put yourself out there to meet people. And the process of meeting people entails uh, most people not being open to those interactions. And that that um, that forces you to have a thicker skin. And then when you develop resilience in that realm, that can be uh, arbitraged, that can be packaged and stored, arbitraged, and then it can translate into uh, other areas of life unrelated to that, e.g., you know, getting through medical career when it's like stressful. That's what it is, you know? Ron Serrero, ha ha ha, beta Japanese. It's true though. I mean, like Japanese dudes are extremely fucking beta. It's nothing negative. It's just like, it's just my observation. Like, you know, they're like women, very feminine. I, I just don't fit into that well. That's like the thing, like, like women in Japan like fucking like beta dudes. Like they like like, you know, uh, some of these Japanese dudes. Like you know, they wear like blush. You know, like uh, they're real or like you know they're real fucking feminine. You know, granted, uh, it's like if I do my eyebrows or something, can, it's but it's like uh, in Asia that's not weird. But I'm not a feminine fucking dude. So like. In Japan, it's sort of like, you know, you get some beta fucking Japanese dudes um, and they can generate efficacy in terms of uh, their dating outcomes. But it's, um, that's like, uh, as Japanese women like uh, feminine fucking dudes, like most of them. There's obviously a niche, you know, occasionally there's like, obviously there's going to be some like, uh, Females who prefer dudes who are more like, you know, actual dudes. But you get a lot of like um, uh, women who are into like feminine fucking dudes who do their like jumping jacks at the gym while I'm like trying to lift or something. LC, more or less. I know you've talked about this before, but you think one should uh, only focus on reviewing NBMEs the couple of weeks before? I have said that, yes. Yeah, like your final month uh, for step one is all NBMEs. And for step two, it's going to be NBMEs and you'll be coming off your second pass of the clinical master's series forms at that point. You can in, you can interweave my PDFs, obviously, my YouTube MCQs, like, of course. But the uh, the bulk of your study needs to be the NBME content. Gene Paul, what do you think about UWorld Biostats reviews separate from QBank around 70 questions? I'm aware. Uh, I think it's a fucking douchebag money grab. I think it's a disingenuous, um, parsimonious money grab. That's what I think. It's like, I have an idea. Rather than like creating a 4,100 question superfluous bullshit QBank uh, and then just, you know, extracting 70 Biostats questions or whatever it is from the QBank and charging people extra, how about you just 
not take those questions out of the Q bank to begin with and just give people the comprehensive representation of biostats that they pay like 600 bucks for, for their subscription to your fucking Q bank. So I see that as like a disingenuous uh, money grab. I don't like that. I don't like people who are disingenuous. Obviously it's business and like they have branding and like, you know, someone up top is like, you know, probably a, um, you know, an agent at business, like good at business. And then, you know, they make cash that way. That's fine. Like people have their prerogatives. Like there's, um, but I just think it's a disingenuous money grab. I don't like that. Like they can go fuck themselves in my view. Ali H, you rock brother. This is such an inspiration. Doc Monopoly, why is NBME 25 viewed as the hardest and most scores are below average for it? Is a high yield? I have a month left. That's not true. That would be like a myth. Students like to perpetuate like nonsense myths. That's not true. You'll get people who like, you know, um, like for example, when I was sitting for step two back in the day, um, NBME 7, I sat four, six, and seven online at the time. Five didn't exist, as I said. And now we have nine through 14 online, right? But I sat four, six, and seven online and like seven on the forums at the time. Uh, everyone talked about how like seven uh, was the hard one. That was like the whole thing everyone talked about. Like seven's the hard one. I got shitty scores on four and six. And I was like freaking out because those are supposed to be the easier ones. And then I did well on seven. It was the fucking opposite. It was literally the fucking opposite of what like everyone said. And so that's why it's anecdotal. But like, that's why I say like, um, you know, I could have made, I could have been the person who made a post that got amplified, right? I could have been the one who said like, Hey, I shot up on seven. It was easier than four and six. I could have been that person who launched that fucking myth. And then you get like people thinking seven's easier, but instead what got amplified was that seven was harder from some other person who, you know, wrote about their little experience and that's what happens on these forums. I said all the NBMEs are equally representative of the real deal score wise. You know, like obviously the latest forms we could just like arbitrarily, like if it's a multiple choice question, you have, you're forced to choose an answer. Like, sure, you'll say NBME 31 or NBME 14 is supposed to be most reflective, but it doesn't fucking matter because all the questions are the same. All the questions are recycled like and reused the pool of questions. I mean, like, they're all the same. Arsenic, if I'm getting less than 35 out of 50 on some of the CMS forms, uh, scoring anywhere between 30 to 39 to 50 thus far, should I go back and do incorrects and you world answers? No, I've said that, I said Arsenic, that you're gonna go through all the CMS forms. You're not gonna worry about your scores. You're gonna finish all the CMS forms the first pass. You're gonna do maybe six through eight. Regardless of your scores on six through eight, even if you're not happy with them, you're going to do a double pass of all the CMS forms after. Then you're going to do free 120. Then you're going to do nine and 10 NBMAs. And if your scores are shitty on nine and 10, if you're like wanting a 255 minimum and you get like a 225, 229, let's say on forms nine and 10 respectively, then you could possibly go back through Ulid and Corrects for like a month, month and a half. And then you can revisit. Uh, I would have you revisit, redo six, seven, eight, uh, free 120, nine and 10, as though you've never done them. We don't care about your scores, but we'd have you redo those just for review. Then I'd have you do 11 and 12. And then you'd see that your scores have gone up. Aldol, 24. What was it like to work for First Aid? How did you get involved? And why did you decide to leave starting your own thing? I mean, it's a long discussion, right? I was very active on a forum back in the day of during my step one days, like I used to study all the time. And then I would like use the forms to make posts and stuff like that. And uh, FA found me. Uh, I got like a DM, they like reached. No, it was like I I was I was very active on the forum. And I like posted a big story about like, uh, my exam experience. And then it didn't end there. After that, I started posting some PowerPoints to the I posted some content to the forum as well. And I made in the PowerPoints, I made um, contrast with FA. Like I said, like, this is what's an FA. This is stuff that's not an FA. That's what I said. It wasn't on purpose. It was just like, I was trying to create content for people on the forum. 
And so like I would write like, this is high yield for this condition. This is what's an FA. This is high yield stuff that's not an FA. That was how I did it. And they found those presentations because I had a social proof on that forum back in the day. And uh, I got a DM from someone. Um, I got a DM from the editor at the time. Uh, I know uh, like uh, Matthew Soshot, I believe is Matthew Soshot. I think he still works for FA. I think he's still on the front cover. He's probably senior editor still. But I got a DM and then um, they set up the interview with uh, Tao Li. And then I Skyped Tao Li um, from my from one of the libraries at my campus. And um, the dude's a fucking like, you know, super affable, like friendly dude, always smiling. Like, like the, you know, people tell me I should smile more, right? It's like, he's like always smiling. Um, super fucking happy dude. And we just chatted. We just chatted. Uh, I didn't dress up or anything. It was just, I literally just met. I was in like a t-shirt, didn't shave. I just like met, I just like Skyped him from this windowless room. And then, um, and I just told him, I'm like, because I memorized FA at the time. And I just said, like, you know, this page in the MSK chapter, you have this, it should say this kind of thing. I think this would be an improvement. We just chatted. And then, yeah, they took me on as an author. And then I worked as an author, an author on the 2014 book. And I put a lot of fucking time into that book. I put like, I was definitely the most gunner author. Like I put in like hours, hours, hours on the book and, um, you learn the process. I learned how they create the book. I learned like, you know, how to, the interaction with the team, the editors, like how they do things. And then, uh, because I'm a gunner, I'm a go getter. Like I pushed assertively to get to editor and I did. And then they took me on as editor for 2015. And then I was, yeah, I worked as an editor and I knew how the team worked. And, um, at that point I said, well, I can do this better. I can create my own book. This was back in like 2015, 2016. I was like, I can do this better. Um, and I decided I had to sign non-competition agreements to uh, stay with them. Uh, or non-competition agreements where I couldn't make my own content for like many years after leaving FA. And so if I stayed with them, uh, I couldn't uh, make content like legally. Um and that was a deal breaker for me, you know, because I started working my own textbook at the time, which ultimately, you know, I didn't uh, publish, but I was working on my own textbook. And then, um, but I was, I was, I worked on very like preliminary early like content while I was in med school. Um, but uh, yeah, I finished 20 of the 2015 book and I could have stayed on as a senior editor. I could have done that. If I really gave a fuck, I could have uh, stayed on as a, um, you know, had my name on the front cover of FA and stayed on as a senior editor. Uh, I just didn't have interest because of the non-competition agreements. Like, I didn't want to like not be able to make my own content. I didn't want that. I didn't want to be legally bound in that way. Um, you know, but that's why I ended up leaving FA. But I also worked for them. I worked for uh, USMLE RX at the time. I was an editor for USMLE RX. I, um, I like rewrote a lot of their questions as well. And I was also, I made uh, like their express videos. This was like back in like 2015, 2016, uh, 2015. I was like mainly 2015. Um, so I was, I worked with them on a variety of projects, you know, I saw how like things work. And so that was good experience, you know, but Aldo 24, what was it? I just fucking read that. Daniel uh, Mwambi, you say you're subbed to my channel. I appreciate it. Or if you just subbed. Guys, if you're here, give the video a like. And if you're not subbed, please sub to the channel. Ali H, shout out to Nakia Brooks for all the donations. I agree with that. Amar Saad, is it necessary to read NBMEs 1 through 20? The answer is uh, not 1 through 19. You don't have to. Just 20 through 24, free 120, and then uh, 25 through 31. Add a no hypothesis. How is the step two average score 247? Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Seems really high. It is high. It was like 233 or four when I sat. Like I got a 260 on step two, which is like a low score now. But like when I sat a decade ago, it was like a good score. You know, <clears throat> it would be like getting a 270 today. 
that would be the equivalent. It was like not crazy high. Like there's people who get like 283 and shit. I mean, yeah, there's high scores. But my 260 like a decade ago would be like getting a 270 today. 247 is like obscenely high. Yeah, I agree with that. It's because people are doing questions now, you know? Like not everyone was doing like loads of questions. Like even I underprepared for step two. Um, I didn't do enough questions. And also uh, it's a long fucking discussion, but I sat step two before I had my peds and obs guy in rotations. Um, because I was in school in Australia and those, I finished med school on peds and obs and gain, and I wasn't willing to wait until I finished med school to sit step two. And I was like, fuck, fuck this. So I literally prepped for peds and obs gain and sat step two before I even had my peds and obs gain rotation, um, or anything. It was just like, you know, but the average is very fucking high for step two. That's true. I agree with that. Doc Monopoly, but what if uh, you only have five weeks of study for step two CK? Should I prioritize going twice through the CMS forms? Um, or should I do one pass if, and UWorld included? Well, you should be finishing all of UWorld. If you can postpone, I would, Doc Monopoly. Because you need to finish um, you need to finish all of QBank and two passes of the CMS forms in six through eight, three one twenty nine through fourteen. You should do all that. You got to do all that. So if you if you can move your exam, I would, because you'll just score higher on two CK. If you can't move your exam, um, if it, if you're literally unable to, then the priority is just it's not U World. It's going to be the CMS forms and the NBME six through fourteen three one twenty. Ali H, what percentage would you recommend on U World for step two before even considering? Uh, NBMEs, even exams, assuming no graduation limitations. Well, you, it, I don't care about your percentage in UWorld because regardless of how shitty or well you're scoring, you're still gonna, um, I'm still gonna have you do the NBMEs after. It's it's a matter of like if you take NBMEs 2021 after UWorld, or you take NBME, you finish the CMS forms, you do six, seven, eight. Uh, step two is different, but for step, uh, no, you're asking about step two. The point is, Ali H, I don't give a fuck what your yield percentages are, okay? You're going to just do the NBME forms. That's what it is. I said this already like multiple times in this chat, that when you finish UWorld and you do this first pass, first pass CMS forms, 678, second pass, 3120, if your 9 and 10 scores are shit, then we could possibly have you go back and do uh, UWorld incorrects, et cetera. For step uh, one, I mean, you're going to sit in Mimi's 20 and 21 after UWorld, and if your scores are really bad, as in 189 or lower, three-digit equivalent, then we'll have you go back to UWorld incorrects. Arsony, in reference to my previous questions, I'm also trying to get uh, this step to PCK exam done before September 26, applications due. because you still need to do the mini CX as well. The fuck is that? I don't know what that is. What is mini CEX? I don't know what that is. Some people are like, you don't know what that is, Michael? How do you not know what that is? Don't fucking know what that is, all right? Ryan versus Ack Haven. Where can you find the NBME exams? In our Telegram group. Um, they're in our group files. Go to our Telegram group. If you don't know, if you're like, well, I don't know how to access the Telegram group, all my YouTube MCQs, I have the link in a pinned comment below. Okay, I'm not asking you to leave the fucking live stream, open up like a new tab or something, and then just click on the link below, um, you know, in my pinned comments, and that's how you access the Telegram group. And also on my site, you can go to uh, the, my actual melmedical.com. You go to the uh, subscribe tab, and that will have a link to our Telegram group as well. I stopped uh, having people fill out this form where I take their contact information because there's just it's it's reached a point where there's too many people who fill out shit now. I have like a I have literally like a hundred fucking emails. People who want to join the Telegram group, I haven't like looked at the emails yet. It's gotten to that point, so I just had to uh, put the link directly on my fucking site. Say this is our Telegram group because I can't fucking handle the emails. And I'm not gonna have someone else do it. I'm not gonna have like someone take all the fucking you know, could hire a fucking secretary to sit and take all the fucking like numbers down and like be like, here's your link to the Telegram group. 
someone says, well, you have like an AI bot to it or something. Not really that fucking simple. Okay. Um, but I just give the link to I just say, click to the link on the Telegram group on the subscribe page on my website, and then you can go that way. But they're all in the uh, group files, the MME exams. Bem Ghosts. I studied two years ago and resumed now after so long of not studying currently. Did eight out of 16 topics. Did two MBMEs, six, 216, 240. I only need 40% of your world, but plan to do your audio QBank. Uh, plus more MBMEs, bad idea. You seem very like all over the place. I have no idea what you're fucking talking about. Bem Ghosts. Um, I mean, are you talking about like step one or step two right now? Like, I don't know what you're like studying for. 216, 240, I mean, um, chances are you're staying for step two because most people staying for step one don't automatically get their three to the score conversion, so they wouldn't know. Your, your question is very like elementary, which suggests to me that you're not in a position to know about three to the score conversions. So you sat those online, maybe nine through 14. You got your 216, 240. Um, you should be doing all the CMS forms twice. Do my PDFs. Yes, do my audio key bank. Don't touch another NBME uh, until you do two passes. I want you to do, uh, it's like, and you only did 40% of UWorld. You got to finish UWorld. What you're going to do, Bem Ghosts, you're going to finish UWorld with my uh, PDFs and YouTube MCQs. You're going to do 40 questions. Well, actually, I'm going to have you do, I might titrate, no, because your score is uh, 40, 80 per day. Okay. I'd have to chat with you, but it's like 40, 80 per day, but 40 in the morning. Uh, and then I'll have you go through my PDFs, my YouTube MCQs. If you make good progress to the PDFs, we can titrate you up to 80 per day. Uh, then do the CMS forms. Uh, then do six through eight, double pass CMS forms. Free one, 29 through 14. Carson. See, I lost your fucking question. Carson, online, offline, enemy is same. Uh, or if different should be the online NBME. Um, well, I've said you're going to do offline and online NBMEs. It's not just one or the other. Asan Asif, what are your tips about how to get rid of burnout during reviewing and tell me that some people can, that some people cram the information in your world. Is that good? Um, I've said to avoid burnout, you need to go to the gym daily. It's okay to take a day off every once in a while, okay? I mean, people have different thresholds. Like, I didn't take days off when I was studying uh, for USMLE, but I was, like, neurotic. Um, but you can take days off. But you got to go to the gym daily. Um, and in terms of trying to make progress through QBank, I've said you blocks to 10 as well, Okay. My, my views have evolved where I, I think it's a good idea to take some time off, okay? Because I think that just raw going at it, like, you know, uh, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, I don't think that, that necessarily means you're going to get, like, uh, any higher than if you do, like, uh, let's say six days a week or six and a half days a week. I don't think that at some point it's a lot of its potential energy. I think it's okay. Uh, take some break time. That'll prevent burnout. Muhammad Abu Sheikha. Hey, I started you all a week ago without studying anything before it. Now I spend like eight hours to finish 40 questions too long with the explanation. No, it's not normal. It, it's like, I understand your personality type. You're very like hardcore, uh, pedantic. Okay, like you're very meticulous with how you go through content. That's fine, you, you, you know, but you got to be able to go through 40 questions in about four hours. That's going to be your morning phase. And then you're going to have lunch. And then your afternoon phase is going to be, you can titrate up to 80 questions. You can do another 40 if you want, but uh, you got to do my PDFs, my YouTube MCQs. Mr. Amateur 96, good to see you back. A lot of people don't know. Mike was an editor for First Aid back in 2015. Yeah, I was. I talked about it. I don't think it's a big deal. That's why. I 
I don't think it's a big deal at this point for me. It was a big deal at the time. Everything's relative. Like when I was a med student, it was a big fucking deal. It was a huge fucking deal at the time. Now I don't think it's like a big deal. I think my resources are better than FA now. I mean, like, um, Ethiopia cram. I I am repeat test taker. My only, <clears throat> uh, your only NBME left is thirty one. I got seventy three percent. Other repeat NBME is at eighty three percent, seventy six percent. I saw Reddit comment saying NBME thirty one is easy. I saw I'm scared. Exclamation point. Don't know what to fucking tell you. Like, what are you asking me right now? You're just making a par. You're just writing a paragraph telling me you're scared. People DM me with this stuff too. Like, how do I respond to that? I don't respond to that. If it's a DM, right? Then the person will like unfollow or something. It's a like, good fucking unfollow, right? When you don't, when you're not a content creator, you think that people who don't respond, you think people who are content creators uh, have like an ego and that's why they like, don't respond or something. It's not the case. Like people who have massive fucking followings, uh, you got to have some fucking empathy and I'm not big. That's how I've learned some empathy even early. Cause I'm like, I'm not big. Uh, I don't have fucking like 300 K fucking subs. I'm not big, but it's already fucking overwhelming in terms of the number of like people who reach out to me with the same dumb questions. So it's taught me empathy where I'm just like, you know, damn, if someone's got like fucking like 2 million subs you know, you got to realize like they're, they're, it's not that they have a fucking ego and they're ignoring you on purpose. It's that there's 200 fucking people who message them saying the same fucking shit. Like you helped me so much or whatever. And then you, you, you issue like your little fucking mousy question about like with your scores and how you're scared. And then the person doesn't respond. And then you're all like butthurt and think that they're like hubristic and egotistical. And then you like, you're like, well, I'm going to unfollow. Good fucking unfollow. Patrick France, <laughs> Patrick France, I passed up, I, it's amusing to me. I passed step one in my second attempt. Do I need to do UWorld for step three besides UWorld step two to get a better score? The answer is no. Um, that's a good question. People ask that, right? No, I, you don't have to do that because there's already, uh, it's the same thing as saying, do you need to do UWorld and AMBOSS for step two prep, which I've already said no to that. So no, you're not going to do step three. Uh, you were able to help you for step two. You're not going to do that. Jay Solo, any plans to make videos in future regarding uh, advice for behavior on rotations similar to how you similar how do you mentioned catering to the intern on rotations prior to well I can give very good fucking advice regarding like um how to excel on rotations because uh, I rubbed people the wrong fucking way when I was in med school and I learned how to be stellar on rotations. Yes. I've said guys that whether you're just trying to get through clinical rotations or whether you are going to visit somewhere like an observership and you're trying to like get a letter, the number one thing, your number one job as a med student is to help the intern. Your entire compass, everything you do is about helping the intern. Like you're going to be like the intern's fucking like obsequious fucking pet. You're not going to, let's say the intern, there's a, let's say there's another doctor on your team. Who's like <clears throat> three or four years out of med school. Okay. Like another, not a junior doctor per se, but like, you know, registrar, we call them in Australia or senior principal house officer. So you got the intern and then you're on a team with the intern. You've got like another doctor, three years out of med school. Maybe there's another one, five years out of med school. And then you've got the attending who like comes to the rounds and your team and stuff. Um, your job is not to fucking help the doctors three years out of med school. Your job is not to fucking help the doctor who's five years out. Your job is to help the fucking intern. And so everything you do needs to point toward the intern. You got to fucking get to ward rounds early before the intern. You got to get all the fucking charts, the stickers. You got to fucking get things ready for the intern. The intern shows up, he or she's going to say, you don't have to do that. And you're like, no, it's okay. And you have the fucking coffee there. People say, you don't have to buy coffee. That's like too obsequious. I say buy fucking coffee for the intern. Not, it doesn't have to be every day. Twice a week you can do, buy coffee for the intern. 
So you have the coffee there, you have the fucking charts ready for the intern, and you want to be very discreet and um, quiet about things. In other words, you're not going to get everything fucking ready for the intern and then make a show about how you're the one who fucking did it and how you're so amazing and how the intern isn't needed. That's not what you're going to fucking do. You're going to do that stuff. You're going to shut the fuck up and you're going to like sit in your little corner, look down, and you're not going to say jack fucking shit. And you're just going to like sit next to the intern huddled there and you say, do you need anything else? They're like, no. And you're like, you're like okay. And you sit next to the intern. You just shut the fuck up. Okay. And then person who's three years out of med school, five years out of med school, if they need help, they're going to, they don't need your help as a fucking med student. Okay. They're going to be talking to the intern who's an actual doctor who like has a better understanding of things. And so you help the intern, that's going to help the intern help the principal house officer, which can help the principal house officer help the attending. The attending shows up and like, they're just, if they eyeball, they're not going to pay attention to you most of the time. They're not going to pay attention to you. They're not going to be looking at you. They might acknowledge you, say hi. Sometimes they're more friendly than others. doesn't matter how affable they are. So they're just going to, what they're going to be acknowledging or slash like, I, sh no, I shouldn't say acknowledging, what they're going to be noticing uh, is how well you are helping the intern. That's what they're going to help. That's what they're going to notice. Okay. And so everything's going to point toward that. If you want to be a stellar asset on the team, you got to help the person directly above you. Okay. And occasionally, if you know how the team works, uh, you know, the ins, ins and outs of a team, you can occasionally, uh, and very, uh, discreetly. Okay. You don't want to do things with bombast. Like you're gonna, uh, you can occasionally, uh, ask the attending or someone else higher on the team if you can help them with X. Okay. But pretty much everything should just be about helping the intern. It's not about fucking you. It's not about what, you know, you're not going to promulgate what you know. And if, if uh, the attending asks questions to the intern or asks questions to a junior doctor and they don't know the answer, you're not going to insert yourself with your fucking USMLE knowledge. You're just going to shut the fuck up. It's not about you. Okay. And if they do put you on this, if the intern, they ask the intern, the intern didn't know the answer. And then they ask you and you know the answer. You're going to be very fucking calm about things. Okay. You are just going to you know, quietly just, you can give an answer and you can say, well, as you know, the intern name is John, you can just say, well, as John was saying, um, you know, he mentioned X, Y, Z, uh, which is true. And I was thinking going off of what John just said, uh, we were thinking that this could also be the case, which is the fucking answer. That's how you like, uh, insert your knowledge sometimes. Okay. So, there's a way of doing things. It's not about what you know. It's about like how you come off and about um, being a team player. That's what they fucking look for. And I've said in the personal statement, it's going to be the same thing. In the personal statement uh, for your application, you're not going to be talking yourself up. It's not about you. It's not about like um, you saying all the research you did that was amazing or like how you led, led um, you know, some project. And, you, you know, it, it's going to be, uh, about adversity and about how you're a team player and how uh, you have humility because of certain things that have happened in your life. That's the story you need to weave. Muhammad, Abadi. So many of me questions are so fucking weird. A question today about nitrogen for a pilot who didn't eat for weeks. I mean, what the fuck? Oh, you're talking about nitrogen balance. That's like an easy question. It's just negative nitrogen balance. If you haven't eaten for weeks, you have a negative protein balance, just negative nitrogen balance. Cheku Omar, Nidye, I failed step one. Right now, I'm very confused. Do you have any advice? Yeah, I mean, you're just going to have to start back on QBank. That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to do at least a month of QBank. Maybe if you had done like UWorld, for instance, we'll switch you over to Amboss. You'll do Amboss now, maybe instead of UWorld. It's a long discussion, okay? Um, but you're going to be on QBank for at least like one to two months before we touch the NBMEs again. And you have to go through my PDFs. You got to go through my PDFs. Someone just became a member who became a member. 
Adilia, you became a member. You became a bronze member, Adilia. Appreciate it. Adila? Adila? Appreciate it. You became a member of my channel. Do you have a question, Adila? You can ask a question. It's like a super chat, right? So if you have a question, I'll look at a question. I'll scroll back down and see if you got a question. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, if you guys, if it's taking me a long time to get to your fucking question, then if you do a super chat, I'll see it faster. Let's see, where was I? Vikram. Vikram Puni, I've been hearing lately there's about four to five questions per block on step two that are like ethics, quality improvement thoughts. I don't really give a fuck. Um, I have a communication ethics PDF, obviously, but like, it's not a big deal. I'd say just focus on like real medicine. Um, obviously the communication ethics PDF is there. If you're like neurotic about it, you want extra practice. Like it's, it's an excellent PDF. It's there, but like, um, you know, the quality safety control of that stuff. I already talked about that in this live stream that like a lot of that stuff is just going to be, you know, intuition. Let's scroll down and see if, um, Adila, no, you didn't ask anything, Adila. Scroll back up. Roth DSK. What's going through my mind right now is it's 4.56 a.m. I've got like half a tea. I could pump the, it's not, it's not half a tea. Third of a tea. I could drink some extra caffeine. I should, right? So, I mean, when, when am I going to go to bed? 9 a.m.? By the way, if you want one of these, if you want one of these mugs, um, if you go to melmanmedical.com and you click on the there's the social icons at the top of melmanmedical.com, not, I'm not saying leave the live stream, I'm saying if you open a new tab, melmanmedical.com, at the top, there's a little basketball icon. You know, you have like the YouTube icon, the Instagram icon. There's a little basketball icon and you can get like uh, coasters, you can get iPhone covers, stuff like that. I don't really make, it, it's not for money purposes. I don't make money off that shit. It's like, I don't know, if you pay like 20 bucks for this or whatever it is, I get like, I don't know, like fucking 80 cents or something. It's more just for fun and like cool support type stuff. It's similar to the Shopify store that I had uh, with WFA, wrong fucking answer t-shirts. I had, I talked about this in a prior live stream that I, uh, Shopify makes things impossible. Uh, it's not for profit. You can't, you can't, uh, unless you sell a t-shirt for 40 fucking dollars, which nobody wants to buy at that price. Um, you know, you, you make like three bucks off a t-shirt for $40. So it's like laughable, right? You know, you guys would buy t-shirts if they're like $18, wouldn't you? That's cool. So how about I lose money every time I sell a t-shirt? That's, that doesn't make fucking sense. So these products are like, uh, you know, it's not for my financial benefit. It's, it's just for you to be like, cool. I like my medical stuff. And I'm, I think it's cool that I have a cup and that's, but I don't benefit financially from that. Let's see. Uh, Baroth, you say I completed UWorld 70%, didn't do NBME yet. My exam is on August 29th. Uh, I'm planning to complete UWorld by July 20th. I didn't revise the entire subject yet. Should I postpone the day? If you're saying for step one, that's perfectly fine. Uh, that's perfect that you're going to finish UWorld by. Because if your exam is August 29th, your step one, you should be starting the NMEs basically like around like July 25th. So that works out perfectly fine. That's fine. So you should be doing my, uh, until you finish your world. Yeah. You should be going through my, uh, PDFs, my YouTube MCQs. Like you're, you're perfect. That schedule's perfect. Stigmata. When am I supposed to do NBMEs? When am I supposed to do timed? I don't know how I just read that. Like I'm completely fucking dyslexic. When am I supposed to do timed, uh, not tutor, only when I start the NBMEs? Okay, so I said go through QBank, untimed, tutor, random. That's why I prefer uh, students to, you know, increase their macro retention. Uh, for timed mode, it's only if a student uh, explicitly articulates that he or she has problems with pacing. Like if we were to meet over Skype and you're like, no, I always have problems with pacing or like, I failed step one and I had like blocks where I had like seven questions remaining. Like occasionally I get those students and I say, 
okay, we can try things like timed, okay. Uh, but most students, it's not going to be an issue. Like <clears throat> you could do tutor mode up until your real exam and you'll be perfectly fine going into the real deal. Uh, um, but when you start the NBMEs, you can actually do 20, you can do the offline MMEs untimed. Like you can do 20 through 24 and free 120 untimed. The caveat is I don't want you fucking like spending all day on the NBMEs. That's not, uh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like, you don't have to have a Google timer doing the offline NBMEs. Don't spend six hours doing it. You should know, you say, well, it should take me roughly an hour per block or like 72 minutes max per block. Like in that, well, 50 questions per block, maybe about an hour per block max. Like you can look up whatever on Google, like the time conversion that it's supposed to be. I don't know if it's like 72 seconds per question or whatever they have it, but like, uh, you don't have to worry about that for the offline NBMEs, but for online NBMEs, um, if you choose to set the online forms offline, like you get them through a Telegram group or something, then I want you to have a Google timer. Okay, I do want you to have that. Sana Salim Tariq, for someone who just sat uh, step one and is a non-USIMG, do you think one should go for their observership first and then get step two and three, or should they get step two out of the way first and then do, no, no, no. I've said numerous times, never do step two before step one. I've said that because if you do um, step one before step two, that's only gonna improve your score on step two and getting a high score on step two is the utmost priority. So you you have to sit step one first, get, get your pass and then go on to step two. And then, uh, yeah, and then you're gonna go on to step three. It's a re There's a reason why these exams are sat in a certain order. Like when you are in your actual step two, literally, you're physically in the step two exam doing the blocks, it's going to become apparent to you as to why like you sit step one first. Okay, like that's that was that literally what went through my mind uh, consciously, like while I was uh, in my step two. Okay, because there's integration of material at a higher level for step two. Okay, so... Um, you said, or should I get step two out of the way first and then do the U.S. clinical experience? U.S. clinical experience means jack fucking shit. Like, when I dismiss it like that, I'm not saying, like, you know, it's not a checkbox that can help you. I'm saying, like, don't sacrifice a 2CK score because you're, like, worried about getting, like, certain volunteer experience or U.S. clinical observership or something. Like, I occasionally have students like that where, like, They'll be like, oh, I can't do the CMS forms or I can't do all the NBMEs, like, et cetera, because I'm going to do some like bullshit fucking project or like, you know, you know, I'm doing this like clinical observership or something. And I'm like, no one gives a fuck about your little clinical observership. Like what matters is you getting a high score in CK, like nothing else fucking matters. It's about priorities. You got to understand that your step two CK score is like, it's, it's like over 90% of the strength of your application. It really is. And then your class rank. Ali H, your heme PDF is dope, man. Things are making a lot of sense that made zero sense before. I mean, I make I make good PDFs, the heme PDF. Um, that's good feedback as well. It's anecdotal, but I, I mentioned this one prior, in one of my prior live streams. I had a student maybe, I don't know, two months ago. Uh, he came out of the step one. And his feedback was, he specifically just told me, he goes like, uh, Apart from high yield arrows, he goes, I just want to let you know uh, your high yield heme PDF uh, was like a game changer for me on the real deal. That's what he said. He said, like, I got so many questions from your heme PDF. He goes, that PDF was really like important for my real deal. And that was good feedback because it's not typical feedback. You know what I'm saying? Like someone tells you, like, it's not like, it's like someone coming out of the real deal and being like, uh, yo, you're fucking like, you know dermatology pdf was the game changer for me it's like i know it's a fucking good pdf but it's like you know that's like a very specific topic you know what i'm saying and so when someone said heme was like the game changer pdf i'm like okay i haven't mean, that was the first time but it's happened like uh, maybe a few times someone said that pdf it's not in chart format you know like so it's harder to go through for some of you it's just, it's the bullet point format style, but there are a lot of pictures in there. I will make it chart format eventually. I will make like the repro PDF chart format eventually. You know, like a year from now, the resources will be improved. The same way a year ago, you know, they weren't as good as they are now. 
Mama Coca. I failed two years at medical school. Is this affecting my application as an IMG? I'm already preparing for step one this year. I mean, failing two years. Honestly, like it's not ideal, clearly. Um, I think it can be vastly overestimated the uh, negative impact of fails. In other words, I think that like if you pass step one, I'm just giving an example. If you pass step one first time, and then you get like a 250 on step two, and you had like failed a year of med school or something, I really think that failed year is not as big of a deal as like people might think it is. Like, cause they're gonna look at your fucking like scores and be like, well, the 250 is objective. That's like, the 250 is objective in the sense that like, that's higher than like most people who fucking are applying to our program. You know, that's like a pretty good score. I think like you just can't have entitlement. If you have certain adversities on your application, you just can't have entitlement. You have to like, you know, apply broadly. Yeah, you can't expect to get into like, um, you know, Brigham Women's Hospital uh, in Boston or something, or like Massachusetts General Hospital. Like, you can't be like, I'm going to get in categorical uh, in, at MGH. Like, you got to uh, apply broadly. You got to be willing to go to like, you know, Mississippi. Nothing against Mississippi. Be fucking cool in Mississippi. Right? Be fucking cool. Actually, I do think they're number 50. I think they're number 50th in the US. Uh, uh, worst rank for like healthcare, interestingly. I, I like, I like uh, heard that somewhere that they have really like the healthcare is the worst in Mississippi. Like it's ranked 50 out of 50 for like the United States in terms of like healthcare access or something. You know, nothing wrong with fucking Mississippi, but I mean, um there's got to be good things there it's the south right maybe they have like good grits you know like good uh fried chicken or something like there's got to be like a perk to living in mississippi that's how like the simulation works is like you live in a place that like no like most people don't think about or want to go to but you're like mississippi has the best fucking like grits and fucking like taters or something right well, like Idaho is the Idaho, Idaho potatoes. Idaho is the potato state, right? Or Iowa. No, it's Idaho. Let's see. Dr. K, I feel very difficult to remember path. It's difficult for you to remember pathogens and microbiology. What should you do? Um, you can do my PowerPoints on the YouTube. I've said that I have not just YouTube MCQs and micro. You can do the micro MCQs I have, the... Um, those three to five minute clips, right? My YouTube MCQs, but you can do, holy shit, I have 45 minute PowerPoint presentations. It's a PowerPoint playlist on my YouTube for micro. Do high yield derm, that's loaded with micro. Guys, if you're uh, in the live stream, uh, please give the video a like if you haven't already, and please subscribe to my channel. Um, Raja, you took the real deal a week ago, a lot of weird questions. Akil Patuti. What do you think of the world uh, self-assessments for the step two forms? Is that what you're asking me? Um, I don't prescribe the UWSAs in, like, for people's prep, like almost always. I don't prescribe those. I've talked about that. I've said that like if you've exhausted all the NBMEs, you know, you've taken fails on the exam or something, and you're looking for other forms to do, you can do the UWorld self-assessment exams. Mira Kutab, hey Mike, can you please guide how to get anatomy compiled for step one? It's like all over the place, the blood supply lymphatics. Do my fucking anatomy PDF, how's that sound? I have, a, I have an excellent fucking anatomy MSK rheumatology PDF that you can do. That's what you're gonna do. If it's um, low yield, it's not in my PDFs, right? Like some people say, but I want like extra anatomy or something. It's like, well, you know, if it's high yield, I'll talk about it. Like you recognize that like blood supply, I mean, sure, you got to know like you can be aware of the fucking aortic arch, okay? Like the brachiocephalic comes off, right? And you got like, you know, the right subclavian and the right common carotid, right? You got like, you can know basic blood supply, but you don't have to know like all the fucking vessels and like, 
um, the legs or something. If it's high yield, it's in my PDFs. So do my anatomy MSK rheumatology PDF. Hussein Abula, use Melman's PDF plus. That's such a cuck suggest. Like I, I omitted what the next suggestion was. I'm not giving it verbal oxygen. Hussam Halak, your psych list, your psych uh, PDF is too small. It's because I don't give a fuck about psych. It's like no fucking interest. I could easily fucking spend like, you know, a few days working on a psych PDF or something. No fucking interest. Like, I mean, at some point I'll maybe beef it up. It's like, it's like minimal in the priority list. It's like bottom of the fucking priority list. No fucking interest. It's not about me though, you know, I need to put out content that's like for you guys. Um, but I want, you know, imagine that though, like imagine sitting in like your fucking room or imagine sitting at a cafe and like, be like, write about psych. It's like, that sounds real fucking fun, doesn't it? Mumal Rose, I'm like slightly off question. As an IMG, when you go through and pass you assimilate, can you add MD in addition to your primary med qualification? Um, yeah, you can. I mean, it depends, like ECFMG certification, right? Are you saying in addition or in substitute? You can use MD. ECFMG certification allows for that in the US. People in the US. Diana Mary, Brito, Herrera. Hi, Mike. I've been scoring 210 to 225 in NBMEs 20 through 29. But two days ago, my score dropped to 204 and it made me 30. It didn't drop. I think you asked, didn't you ask this question yesterday? You asked this fucking question yesterday. This suggests to me that like people ask a question. I don't answer their question like quick quickly enough because they're like, they're down in the chat. And then um, they like have left the previous, like you come back the next day thinking you can drop a super chat, right? You know, you either, your two options are wait fucking like 45 minutes or something. And maybe I'll get to your question later on down in the chat, or you can just do a super chat and then I'll see it pop up and then I'll answer your question instantly. I'll give you priority that way. But I talked about yesterday, Diane Marie, Diana Marie. I said that uh, your scores didn't drop on to a 204 and it made me 30, quote unquote. I said that it's coincidental, meaning had you just happened to have sat and made me 30 first, then you did NBME, let's say like 27, you got a 225, you'd be like, holy shit, I went up, you know, like 21 points or whatever, but you didn't actually go up. It's coincidental. It's how the forms are. When you sit in NBME and you go up or down like nine points, you didn't go up or down. It's coincidental. Take all the NBMEs, you reshuffle the questions in different, you know, groupings. You're going to have scores that are different. So that's how the really ultimately will be. Martin El Marwin Eltony, when I answer the case correctly, I read only the educational objective. If I read the explanation only for the right answer, is that good enough for step one? Um, I've said when you're addressing wrong answer choices that it's going to be subjective, meaning I've said this a lot. So for example, if you get like a cardio question and it's cardiac tamponade versus pericarditis versus core pulmonal, right? Like you should know how to differentiate those. So when you get it wrong, you can look at the other answer choices and say like, well, why wasn't it pericarditis versus tamponade? Like you can differentiate those conditions. But if it's a weird fucking enzyme question, I don't give a fuck about you looking like memorizing the other enzymes. Okay. So there's a gray area as far as like some questions it matters, some questions it doesn't. Okay. Mostly we can lean against needing to focus on all the wrong answer choices. I just want you to know the main points for the NBME questions. Sai Prasad, do you think our NBME scores for step two might be falsely inflated after we do your PDS? Here we go. Same fucking cut question again. I already addressed this like four times earlier in this live stream, didn't I? 
since we may mark the answer out of pure memory and not biologically. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's massively cuck. I, I, I talked for like 10 minutes about this already. I just said it's like, it's a pretext. Uh, it, they don't artificially inflate your scores. Uh, UWorld and Amboss, they develop their questions directly from the NBME exams, but you don't get people fucking complaining that UWorld or Amboss are artificially inflating their scores, do you? No. If you're studying the right resources, your score is going to improve on the NBMEs. It's just how it works. And the NBMEs are the same as the real deal. So if you do my PDFs, is your real USMLE score going to be artificially inflated? I think people would like that. When you like your USMLE score, your real USMLE, your real deal, when you like your real USMLE score to be artificially inflated to like a 274 or something because you did my PDFs, I think people would be okay with that outcome. It's just top tier cuckery, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's pretextual. It's uh, it's people searching for excuses. It's latching on to an excuse, um, you know, to not do a resource. Arsony, I highly doubt I could pull off a 247. I would have been happy with high 230s or 240. It would be amazing. Damn, this blows. No fucking idea what you're talking about. Shoab Ashkar. Hello, Dr. Moment. Nice to see you again. Good to see you, Shoab. Mimi NK, good to see you. Good to see you as well, Mimi. All right, here we go. Five bucks, super chat. Whoa. Smudge Cell, you gave a $2 super chat. I didn't even fucking see that. It didn't show up at the top. I guess Smudge Cell, I guess there's um, a threshold maybe for the super chats. Maybe it's like, uh, if, if it's not like five bucks or something, then it doesn't show up at the top, but I'm just seeing it now. Smudge, and I'll address yours, Dan Marie. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. I'll address your super chat just in a second. Smudge sells 70% on both uh, free 120s, four NBMEs with an average of around, four NBMEs with an average of around 66%. 66% is borderline smudge sell. Um, 70 is good. Am I good to test? I want you to get your, I want you to um, do more NBMEs. I want you to take the four NBMEs you already did that were 66. I want you to convert them to three to score conversions. You're going to go to uh, Google Images, not Google, Google Images. You're going to type in like NBME 21 score conversion Reddit, NBME 26 score conversion Reddit. You can get graphs of best, best fit lines. You're going to plug your number of wrongs into the X in the equation. Y is your three to score. 197 is pass mark for step one internal. I want 205, 210 plus. If you get 205, 210 plus on your NBMEs, you're good to sit. So your 66%, I think, is borderline. It might not be 205, 210 plus. That might mean you're not ready to sit. If it's like 203, I would not sign off on it. I'd say you're not ready to sit. I'd say sit more NBMEs then. So you got to get 205, 210 plus equivalent. If you don't get those scores, you're going to have to postpone. That's what I do to my students. They might not be happy with that. They say, I don't want to postpone. I don't want to do that. I say, okay, then fucking get 205, 210 plus. You don't have to postpone. Dan Marie, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for answering. I really appreciate it. Yesterday, I had to leave to drive my mom to her work. That's cool, Dana Marie. Herrera. Herrera. Let me see. It's going back up. Arsene says, um, no, show up says, I wanted to ask if we can match an ortho fellowship after doing a UK residency. No fucking idea. I'm pretty sure you'd have to, I don't know that. Pro, I stay within my lane. I don't know the specifics of trying to go into a US fellowship after doing a UK residency. I would say that's hard because um, training in the UK is different from the US guidelines, procedural stuff like. I don't know the I don't know the process with that, and you'd have UCF from G certification, etc. Yeah, as I said, I don't know the process with that. I stay within my lane. Arsony, you said Mini CX is what replaced the CS for some IMG applicants. You need to find three to six US licensed stocks to evaluate your interview. I thought it was just OET. Isn't it just an English exam? I've never heard of Mini CX. What do you mean some IMG applicants? Like why I just I've only heard of OET as replacing the English the bullshit English exam the OET as replacing TCS. I've never heard of this mini CX. I've never had a student do that. Bemgos 
It's not for step one. It's for step one, not step two. I plan to sit for the exam. I, I, I knew it. 240 equals maybe 25. Hmm. I'm surprised. I'm surprised, Bemgos, actually. I'm surprised that you um, you asked hyper rudimentary stage zero level questions, uh, but yet you knew about converting three to the score equivalents. That's very unusual, right? Like you're asking, you asked hyper basic fucking question, right? Which suggested to me you have like, you know, just basic fucking questions, but you had three digit score conversions for your step one for, for your two MB means. That's unusual. It would be the equivalent of like me sending someone like a question on Addison disease. They don't know it's Addison's disease and I have to like teach them what aldosterone does. And then the next question is like fucking, you know, line weaver Burke plot and they like have no problem with it. They're like, oh, obviously it's fucking this line because of this. It's like, how the fuck do you know that? But you don't know what fucking Addison disease is. That's like the equivalent of your fucking question right here. The fact that you did, I mean, I'm going off on it, but it's like, it's notable. It's unusual. Marfin. <laughs> Marvin, hi. Are there any cute guys in this chat? Marvin, that's a fucking like, like what is that? Bem goes. I'm a slow. I'm straight. By the way, I've said that. You know, I've I've said I'm 100 straight. Bem goes. I'm a slow reader, so can't do much in two months. Div, God, reading the same questions is exhausting even to me. Wonder how you answer these things every fucking day. Uh, well, it's what you have to do when you're in my position. There's no entitlement to growing. You don't become like an influencer by accident. You become an influencer by like, you know, developing credibility and validity and there's repetition of things. I'm not an influencer. I'm under no, like, I'm not delusional. I'm under no fucking like, you know, I'm not fucking disillusioned, not an influencer, but becoming the process of becoming an influencer, you know, if you hit like a hundred K, et cetera, uh, it doesn't happen by fucking accident. Let there be no fucking confusion whatsoever that that would be entailed by answering the same dumb fucking questions daily for like years. That's how it fucking happens. Marvin, there is no need to use the F word constantly. Let's get salty, right? That's, that's a good one. That's actually my favorite comment in this chat so far. I like that. That's my favorite comment so far. Someone getting salty over my use of the F word. <laughs> That's so funny. Assad says, Marvin, you got to go, bud. I thought I read that as uh, I read that as you Assad. I read that as you saying, uh, Marvin, you got to like go to bed. You got to like, you know, like, he, like as if he's old man has to like get tucked into bed or something. Cause right. Marvin, you go from asking if there's cute, if there's cute guys in this chat, you know, like a homosexual type of comment. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay. I said, I'm straight. There's anything wrong with that. Okay. I have LGBT friends, whatever. My uncle's LGBT. It's not about that. I'm saying you go for making a comment in the chat, asking if there's any cute guys here, which has nothing to fucking do with USMLE to now you go to, you uh, are like reprimanding or upbraiding uh, the notion of me dropping repetitive uh, F-bomb invectives. That transition is just, I mean, that's a transition. Aditya, or Adila, Adila, thank you for becoming a bronze member. I, I acknowledged that earlier. I just got down to your green rectangle. Carlos Diaz, what's the target safe range for the old and free 120s? Two thirds, I've said. Hmm. Let me see. I'm going to hide this user. I just blocked a user from the channel. I'll just hid the user. Yeah. You're going to threaten to report my channel because I use the F-bomb? I mean, what is that? You can use the F-bomb on YouTube. There's nothing wrong with that. But you're not going to, like, issue threats in my fucking live stream. Right? It's like, I'll just hide your comments forever. That's what I just did.
storyteller. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mike. Can you explain how to go through your PDFs, UWorld, NBMEs for step one? I'm new to your PDFs. I've done multiple resources and I've finished 60% of UWorld. Is 60% correct? Um, I've said you're going to finish UWorld before you go to the NBME exams. That's what you're going to do. You're going to finish, uh, you're going to finish UWorld. Okay. So you're going to finish all of QBank. Then you're going to do the NBME exams. And while you're doing QBank, you're going to go through my PDF. So you have your 40 questions. I've answered this numerous times, 40 questions in the morning, take lunch. Afternoon can be, you can titrate up to 80 questions or you can do uh, my PDFs, my YouTube MCQs. Find myself, Mike, which of your PDFs are heavy on step two CK for someone who's done with step one? Um, which your PDFs are heavy on two CK for someone who's done with step one? Well, I have step two PDFs you should do, like surgery, peds, obsgain. Um, and also just for general internal medicine, like you should be doing cardio, poem, renal, gastro, heme. They're all, all the step one subject PDFs are also for step two. Guys, if you're new to the live stream, please give the video a like. Sub to my channel if you haven't already. Storyteller, P.S. I've never taken NBME. Uh, should I finish UWorld in its entirety before taking them? I've said yes. Or do I take them as I complete UWorld? No, no, no. You're not doing NBMEs in the midst of UWorld. You're going to finish QBank first, then you're going to do the NBME exams. Gene Paul, give us some relationship advice. Do you have anything more specific than that? Right? I'm not the most conventional person in like issue relationship advice. Right? But if you have a more specific question. Stephen Ray Fernandez. Hi, doctor. Just want to ask your advice. He scored 36 ish percent. Uh, first pass of UWorld. My exam will be late September. Three months. Do you advise me pushing my step one exam? I would uh, first pass you will 36%. I'd want to talk to you about like, when did you finish that first pass if you were at 30, 36% correct? Um, so, and did you sit in any, any NBME exams, Stephen Ray Fernandez? Um, but if you only scored 36-ish percent, I mean, clearly you're tanking the NBMEs anyway. I would probably have you go through all your yield incorrects, or I'd just have you, I, that's probably what I'd do, which is going to be most of the fucking QBank anyway. And then, I, or I'd have, just switch you over to Amboss. I'd probably just have you do all your yield fucking incorrects again. Take you like a month and a half, and then I'll have you do NBME 20. That's what I would do. We're approaching the two hour mark. I'm going to end this pretty soon. Universe boss, Ham hey Elman, one of the, let me see, I just lost where I fucking was. <laughs> hey Melman, one of the juniors saw me watching your channel today and she was asking me today if you could make any MCAT content at some point. Uh, so I thought I'd ask you, please share your thoughts. I don't focus on MCAT. I'm very niche USMLE. That's what I'm doing. I mean, I'm not focused on MCAT. I could. I could make MCAT stuff, but I'm not. It's not my focus right now. People's focus is like pure cash. That's different. You say, Mike, why don't you make like an MCAT wing? Or like an MCAT branch and just, you know, hire people to do MCAT. Okay. You know, maybe in the future when I build more brand and I could easily branch in that type of direction, right? It's not my focus right now. It's about like uh, mental cycles, thought cycles and mental energy. I'm not like at this point, my focus isn't like pure, like if it's a gun to my head and someone says <clears throat> you have to have a certain like uh, revenue by like, you know, the end of 2024 or something, I could do stuff like that, but it's not my focus right now. I'd rather just casually make you a simile content and like, that's what I want to do right now. I'm just, I'm just trying to put out value and make content for you a not focused on like MCAT right now. Maybe in the future. Storyteller says, LOL, program director. Uh, why do you want to apply to our program at the University of Mississippi? Me, your fried chicken is lit. 
Um, I would like, I don't know how I'd respond to that. Like, yeah, pretty much. Why do you want to apply to our program? Is I don't think they'd ask that question because like no one would like, there's very few people who like truly want to like go to Mississippi. They'd have to be fucking delusional to think like people are like purposely going to their con their fucking institution, Mississippi, because like they're passionate about being specifically in Mississippi. You know, it could be like you have family there, you know, like um, just be like, I fucking want to be in the deep South. You could. You know, that would be my response. If I had to improvise a response, I'd say like, I'm aware that Mississippi ranks 50. Uh, I was reading uh, that Mississippi ranks 50 out of 50 in the United States for um, being underserved for healthcare. And that's in turn, I can make greater contribution that way. And I think it's important to build up uh, communities in Mississippi. I'd say that's important here. That's probably what I would say. And I'd be like, and, uh, you know, I like Southern chicks or something. I like, I wouldn't say that, but it's like, you know, you gotta be professional in that environment, right? Moogle 900, hey doc, make, uh, make my kit in your uh, live chat moderator. He is competent and will do a good job, I assure you. Universe boss, I lost where I was. Universe boss. Yeah, Idaho potato and Miss Grits and fried chicken and Cajun food. I like fucking spicy food. Cajun. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that would be good. There'd be, I mean, I would not be like ripped if I were living in the United States because I'd be like eating a lot of fucking like, I'd be eating a lot of fucking like, yeah, barbecue, fried food and shit. Nah, I, I could, uh, if it were literally the situation, I'd eat well, but it would like suck. It would suck to be surrounded by like amazing fucking like high calorie food all the time. That's like amazing. Like, you know, here's like this home kitchen barbecue place with like, you can get your fucking uh, like waffle fries, giant waffle fries and like massive fucking barbecue shit. Like, you know, it'd be, it would, I'm not talking about like McDonald's, right? I'm talking about like good fucking legit Southern cooking that like to be surrounded by that, you know? Be hard to be abstemious um, and careful with how you're eating. In Japan, it's easier because like things are healthier here. I'd fish for dinner. I'd fish. I had uh, liver. I had liver. Liver is uh, very high in nutrients. Liver is very high in nutrients. I'd fish. I'd liver. I had uh, asparagus. Um, I had a big salad that had chicken in it. Um, I had a soup, I had a chicken soup and then I had a uh, kiwi for dinner, for dinner, for dessert. That's what I had. And then I had a protein shake. I had a coconut protein shake with milk, with high protein milk. Um, I'm fucking hungry right now. I'm going to eat. After this live stream, I'm going to eat. That's what I'm going to do. Then I'll shave and shower and stuff like that. From your experience with students, Adam asks, from your experience with students, which MBME do they find the hardest out of 2531? Nonsense. I've said before, it's all myth. It's all speculation. They're all the fucking same. Muhammad Ab uh, Ab uh, Abadi. Abadi. I got 77.5% and maybe 20 after score conversion. It's 231. Yeah, it's a high, it's a high score. I'm in shock how people get 260 plus quadruple question mark. Amen. Uh, Al Hamadi. No, I mean, it was nothing against that guy who was HFREF. It was nothing against that dude who was here. Like, I mean, people will be salty and say shit, you know? It was nothing against that. It was just like, um, like you're going to threaten to report my channel because I use the F-bomb. Like, what is that? That doesn't have a place here. You're allowed to use the F-bomb on YouTube. Like, that's not, like, you're allowed to do that. You can't run, like, I think if you drop F-bombs, if you uh, use invectives, um, that can affect, like, ads on a video. 
Like if you're trying to run ads, I don't run ads on my videos, right? If I wanted to run ads, that's different. You're allowed to curse on YouTube. Like, I don't know what, like, how you can be disillusioned thinking like you're not allowed to curse on YouTube, right? You're allowed to curse on YouTube. But not if you run ads. You know, if you're Mr. Beast, you're not going to curse in your videos because you can make, like, I don't know, like $20 million in a video or something. It's like, you're not going to curse. Okay, so you can keep your ads, keep your ad revenue. Eamon asks, thank you, or you say, thank you so much for your efforts, Mike. Green Surrey, Jean Paul. <laughs> Jean Paul asks, how to get revenge if a chick dumps you? The notion of being vindictive if you're butthurt about some chick who dumped you, I mean, that's not how I think because um, if there's a chick who breaks up with you and you're despondent slash hurt by that, uh, the way you get over it is by instantaneously going out and approaching like 200 other chicks. And then you pick up numbers and then you instantaneously forget about this one chick who dumped you. It just like, it, but that's not uh, that type of post getting dumped behavior is not what most guys do. Hence, they're in a position in the first place where some chick fucking dumps them. So it's easier said than done. If you're some fucking beta and you're some situation where you're like all butthurt about some chick who broke up with you and you're like upset about it, then the notion of like going out and saying, yeah, just open like a hundred fucking chicks uh, in the station or whatever, go say hi to a hundred girls and get some contacts. Well, the dude's not capable of that because he is the type of guy who was in some subjugated fucking relationship to begin with where, you know, the chick he's with was, uh, you know, she wore the pants, right? I mean, that's how you get over people real fast. If you're, if that's what you're trying to do, is you have to, uh, you have to meet people like instantaneously. That's what you have to do. You just distract yourself and you go meet people instantaneously. Um, that's how you move on on the end of a dime. And if that's your behavior, if you're able to do that, then you would never get upset by a chick dumping you, quote unquote. You can't be emotional as a fucking dude. You got to like, you know, if a chick like breaks up with you or something, you just say like, all right, like you literally react zero to that. You just, it's like, all right. Reen Suri, thank you for all your tips today. Eamon, just a quick question. Do you uh, do a specific sequence for preparing for the US simile, like starting by a specific subject and following by another one? Um, not really. Like, I mean, I've said go through QBank untimed to or random, but I'd say like uh, endocrine is really important. Endocrine, high yield arrows, that stuff's really, really important. But in terms of like cardio, palm, renal, gastro, heme, immuno, biochem, neuroanatomy, all that stuff, like it's not a crisis as to what you start with. Cardio, I tend to start people on cardio after, and like and after endocrine, you know, endocrine st type stuff. Um, I tend to just by default start people on cardio and poem. Raj Matthew protein powder and post slash pre workout of choice if you do that. Um, post slash pre workout of choice. Well, I do drink protein powder. You have to as a dude. People who like only like uh, eat real food. I eat a lot of real food, but it's impossible to get all the calories you need. It's like literally impossible. You know, if you're actually like a eating a lot, it's really, really, really fucking difficult to get all the calories without like supplementing with protein powder, protein chips, protein bars. It's hard. You know, I don't have fucking like nine fucking grilled salmon fillets in my fridge, you know, or like 12 chicken breasts grilled chicken breasts, just like waiting, you know, I, I tend to do things like one to two days at a time. I don't like having like a week's worth of food in my fridge. I like having just like one to two days tops. Um, my fridge is like pretty like empty at the moment. I've got two bottles of tequila in the freezer. I've got two bottles of Nihon Shu, which is Japanese rice wine in my fridge. I've got like a milk, I got milk, high protein milk. Uh, I've got some ketchup. I've got um, 
protein powder, I leave it in the fridge. I leave my matcha and hojicha in the fridge. That's like all I have in my fridge right now. I looks like I ate my food already. So I got to like, um, yeah, I'm going to have to actually, because it's 5.40 a.m. where I am right now, after this, I might go out and get breakfast. There's a Kisa 10. Kisa 10 is the name, uh, is what you call coffee bars here. They're like taverns. They're dark. They're wooden. They're run by old people. And there's neighborhood Kisa 10 here where I can get like lots of eggs. Like I can go out after this and get like six eggs. Like I'll, I'll put a photo in my IG story. That's what I'll do. I'll put a photo in my IG story of like, I'll get like eggs. Uh, I can get some toast. I won't, I won't get too many pieces of toast. I'll get like maybe two, I'll get two pieces of toast. That's it. Cause you don't want too many carbs. Uh, but I'll have like two pieces of toast, maybe like six eggs. I'll have milk because I am going to go to bed after. So I'll have milk. I'll go to this Kisa 10. I won't get coffee. I'll get like warm milk. I'll get six eggs, six hard boiled eggs. Uh, I'll have two pieces of toast. And then I'll come back here. I'll shave, shower. Uh, maybe have another protein shake. Seriously, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. But the Kisa 10, like that, I'm thinking of going to. It opens at like five thirty a.m., so I can go there like right after this. Nakia, you say good thing. It's it's a good thing that you didn't come to Oshner then. Hardly no way to stay in shape in New Orleans. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like I would have to, uh, I could do it because I'm disciplined. I have good discipline with like my fitness, but it would be very fucking hard. I'd have to do like a lot of cardio in like, it would have to be a lot of cardio in my routine. So you can eat a lot of calories. Uh, that's like good, like, you know, Cajun fucking, you know, seafood fucking amazing, like uh, places in New Orleans, I'm sure. But you ha I'd have to do a lot of cardio. You know, just looking at some med questions here because I'm going to end this chat. I could go for like three fucking hours, right? But I said I want to get some egg. I want to get six eggs. I'm really hungry now, so I want to get some six eggs and uh, toast and milk, and I'll post the photo of my IG story. Yeah, there's just more med questions here. Shanique, you asked, do you have a resource to find out which medications to use during pregnancy? for antibiotics or do you just learn those as they come up for UTI, pyelonephritis, et cetera? Nitrofurantoin is classic for cystitis in pregnancy. Um, well, I mean, like I talk about some stuff in my, uh, you know, in my PDS, choriomneonitis, right? Like amp and gent plus, plus or minus clinda. Talk about that. Same for postpartum endometritis. For group B strep sepsis or meningitis or pneumonia in a neonate, you're going to give amp and gent, not ceftriaxone and vinc. I mean, don't give doxycycline during pregnancy. So if you're a pregnant woman, she has like Lyme disease, doxy is wrong. You're going to give ceftriaxone or amoxicillin. They're not going to fix it on like severity of the disease. <laughs> Gene Paul, how do you make your fucking chicken? I just buy grilled chicken. Have you established citizenship in Japan says quadruple two? I've, I said in my IG live that uh, at the moment, I don't want to be a citizen in Japan because they don't allow dual citizenship. I would love to have a Japanese passport. It's the strongest passport in the world. I would love that. But I, they don't allow dual citizenship. So I'd have to relinquish my US citizenship. And I don't want to do that yet. I can become a permanent resident. I'm a, I've applied for permanent residency. And I'm going to get that this year. Permanent residence. Um, but I launched that application last year. It just takes a long, you can take up to 18 fucking months to get your permanent residence here. I launched that application, but I chose not to launch a national app, like a, become a Japanese national. We don't call them citizens. We say Japanese national. Uh, that'd be cool, right? You'd be like, oh, I got a Japanese passport and all this stuff, but I'd have to relinquish my U.S. citizenship. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. It sucks, you know, that they don't allow dual citizenship. Quincy, do you speak Japanese fluently? Street fluent. 
I hit, I can have like street and cafe conversations without a problem. You know, when things get really fucking serious, like, you know, if you have to like, you know, deal with, uh, you know, problems or something, like if you are dealing with, uh, you're trying to have a serious conversation about like technical jargon, uh, that can be difficult. Like whether it's about like insurance stuff or you're, you know, you're at a hospital or like, uh, things can get challenging. If people are speaking fast, I don't know what they're saying. I hate, I don't like fast. I'm, uh, it's difficult for me to hear very fast Japanese. I'm not good at that. <laughs> Story tell your goal in life is to visit Japan with your wife after you finish your steps. You said you heard it's incredible things from the history to the food of the people, the vending machines and the culture. Yeah, that's true. Raj, I got to get to the protein supplementation plan. Gene Paul is cardio for betas. I'd say no. You, you just got to lift a lot too. Don't like neglect. Don't do cardio without lifting. Like go to the, like if, if I have like a heavy cardio routine, right? I've said I haven't run in like maybe two and a half weeks because I'm bulking right now for summer. But like um, if I do cardio, like you don't want to just go to the gym, run, and that's it. Like you want to do, you want to lift for like two hours and you want to have like a protein bar while you're, lifting so you're like not catabolic uh, or protein shake before you go to the gym and then uh you do your abs or whatever and then you can do your cardio for like a half an hour so you weave in cardio and then that deficit adds up like if you burn like 500 calories when you run or brisk walk whatever you choose to do and then you do that like you know seven days a week it doesn't have to be seven days clearly but you know seven times 500 you know 3500 and then you know, that's a pound. So that's your pound lighter after that week because you integrated that cardio into your routine. So in the course of a month, that's four pounds, right? So, and it also like, um, yeah, it's, it's if you're not lifting. People who run, but they don't lift, that's like beta. Moogle 900, you don't gain weight no matter how much I eat, lucky as fuck. That's not true. It's just, you don't eat enough. It's hard to eat a lot. I just fucking said this. You don't eat enough. I'm literally about to go eat six eggs and like two pieces of toast and uh, a milk. And that's like, that's like, I see that as like baseline. Like I have to do that. And then I'm going to come back here, shower. I might have another protein shake after that. That And that's like, you'll go have your fucking three eggs or something and think you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not gaining weight. It's like, well, no fucking shit. You're not eating enough. You have to eat a fucking lot. It's hard. That's why I have like, you know, you have to supplement with protein supplements. That's what I do. Arrestas just knew about you just found out about me. My amazing videos and PDFs. How expensive is Japan? It's not expensive. I find it pretty cheap here overall. People are often like surprised by that. They they're like, really? I thought Japan was so expensive. It's like, why? Why did you think that? It's not that expensive. I think it's pretty cheap. What do I think about CrossFit? You tore your Achilles and stopped? You seriously tore your Achilles? That's so fucking annoying. Um, were you on like a fluoroquinolone or something? Worth it to gain lean muscle and cut? Um, I, I mean, I don't do, I've never done CrossFit. Like, I just more or less have a good understanding, a good, I don't count calories, but I have a good subjective understanding of whether I'm on a deficit or a surplus. And I said the past like two and a half weeks, I'm on a surplus um, because I'm trying to bulk right now. But like CrossFit, like these types of like integrated programs like that, they're good for people. Like some people need like a very like regimented, like uh, militaristic type of training routine, right? So that they can, that's how they best uh, make progress. I'm able to go to the gym and just sort of like <clears throat> lift, do my own thing, do abs, run, eat healthy. Like I know what I'm doing. And then that just takes care of itself. Like I don't need like CrossFit to do that. Mumal Rose. 
I said I'm from New York. Um, my, my whole family is actually Jewish background. Playing basketball, playing college, you're trying to. Um, so it's been two hours, 20 minutes. I'm going to, um, guys, give the video a like and uh, subscribe my channel if you haven't already. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing this two hours, 20 minutes. I didn't start this fucking live stream talking about me. I did two hours. I did two plus hours of uh, med chat, didn't I? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, guys, I'll do, obviously I'll do more of these streams. All right, I'm going to go have, uh, I said I'm going to post my, uh, to the Instagram story, I'll post my fucking like eggs or whatever. I'll see you guys.